100th anniversary season didn't get off to a very promising run when they lost Derek Jeter for six weeks on opening night. However, their veteran pitching staff led them to a 20 and 4 start, and their amazing April was infectious to all in pinstripes and in a grand style. It was all smiles for the Bronx Bombers. But then their bats went south quickly as the arch rival Red Sox caught the Yankees. And they refused to knuckle under as they went head to head. As the Yankees' hot start completely slipped away, the boss started to fume. And he's making headlines again in New York. It's the first place Red Sox and the Yankees next. Tonight from Yankee Stadium, the Yankees and Red Sox wrap up a three-game series that has already stymied Roger Clemens bid for 300 and angered the boss. Looks like this ancient rivalry is in great shape. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave O'Brien, along with my partner, Buck Martinez. Nice of you to join us on this Wednesday night. And, Buck, when Yankee starters were winning virtually everything in sight, the guy who won the most and won the prettiest was Mike Nusita. He went 7-0, and but he's lost three in a row. What's up with Moose these days? Well, Dave, early on when Mike Nusita got off to that great start, he had pinpoint control. He would get ahead of hitters, and then he'd finish them off. He was 7-0 and with a very good ERA. His last three starts, Anaheim, Texas, and Toronto here at Yankee Stadium, those veteran hitters have really made him work, and his control hasn't been as keen. For him to be effective tonight against this good-hitting Red Sox team, he's really got to locate that fastball. Well, his opponent will be Derek Lowe. Last year, he was brilliant from April through October, winning 21 games. He was second in the American League in earned run average. But you look at his ERA coming into tonight, it's almost five and a half. What's going on with him? Well, I think Derek Lowe is thinking about last year when he was 21 and 8. He threw a no-hitter last April. This year, he is trying to improve on those numbers. He's been okay at Fenway Park going 3-0. and But on the road in Kansas City, Minnesota, and Toronto, He's been hit hard. Derek Lowe has to remember that when he has sinker balls on, he can get easy outs. He tried to make it sink a little too much early in the season, Dave. Well, tonight he's on the natural stuff here at Yankee Stadium as the Red Sox and the Yankees wrap up a three-game series in the house that Ruth built. Now, it looks like the best pitchers duel in the series, but Nomar Garcia Parra and superstar Derek Jeter will decide that tonight on Wednesday Night Baseball. ESPN's Wednesday Night Baseball, brought to you by Bank of America, higher standards. Wednesday Night Baseball on ESPN from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Garcia Parra and the Red Sox about to swing against Mike Mussina and the Yankees. Here's what's on the line tonight. The Red Sox know leaving town, even with a loss this evening, they will maintain first place. It's a game and a half edge over the Yankees, and yet that's enough to anger George Steinbrenner with a $180 million payroll, not happy that his team is looking up at the hated Red Sox. So we get a look at the starting nine of Grady Little. The speedy Johnny Damon kicks it off for Boston. Then there's Todd Walker hitting second. Look at Bill Miller. He's hitting 386 in the seventh spot. And, Buck, these guys have given the Red Sox kind of a National League mentality. Well, they sure have. Miller and Walker have done a great job. And Bill Miller is hitting 386, as Dave's mentioned. And that's the highest of any player that was acquired in the offseason. You change teams, and generally it puts a lot of extra pressure on the individual. But he's been a very important spark to this Red Sox offense. They need him big tonight against Mike Mussina, 7-3 and three in his career against Boston, 16-11. and 11. Go back to September 2nd, 2001. He nearly talked a perfect game at Fenway Park that was broken up on a single with two out in the ninth. Mike Messina has a lot of weapons to deal with. A couple of great fastballs. He's got a cutter and he's got that knuckle curveball that can be devastating. But as I mentioned in the open, Messina has really been worked over by the hitters he's faced in his last three games. All losses. Anaheim, Texas, and Toronto. And what they have done is they've made him throw a lot of pitches. So when you stand at the plate and see a lot of pitches against Mike Messina, you have a better chance of cashing in. Defensively for the Yankees, Hideki Matsui will play the majority of games in center with Bernie Williams out. He's flanked by Juan Rivera and Raul Mondesi. Matsui played six years in the Japanese League in center field for the Yomiuri Giants, so he's been out there before. He doesn't have the speed of a Bernie Williams, but he gets great jumps and reads off the crack of the bat. He made a marvelous catch Monday in support of Roger Clemens, but Matsui is in the spotlight right now. He is really the guy in the middle of the crosshairs for Steinbrenner. He's been criticizing his hitting. Here's Johnny Damon to lead things off against Mussina. 
in game three of this terrific rivalry about to get underway at Yankee Stadium. And the first pitch is right through there for a strike. Damon hitting 248. He'll be followed by Todd Walker and then Omar Garcia Parra. 63 degrees and no rain, although we did have light rain late this afternoon when the tarp was on the field. Unlike Monday, when Clemens bid for 300 fell short, we did not have a rain delay of any kind. Boston coming in with a 31 and 20 record. So a game and a half lead over the Yankees in the American League East. Cleared foul out of play off to the left by Damon. One ball and two strikes. But here's where Messina really has to make a pitch now. Instead of giving Johnny Damon a few more pitches to look at, go ahead and try to finish off the at bat right here. Throw a good sinking fastball down and away or bust him inside above the belt with a fastball. Well, he is leading the American League in strikeouts with 77, one more than Roger Clemens. So he's been a big key man for the Yankees. But Damon's so good at spoiling it. 93 mile an hour fastball, just trying to get some lumber on it, knock it out of play. Well, and that's what the Red Sox did to Clemens on Monday. They wasted an awful lot of pitches, elevated his pitch count early in that ball game. The guy who really killed him was Doug Mirabelli. He had a, an at bat where he had 10 pitches. Now, Clemens struck him out, but he saw 10 pitches and he wore down the rocket. Breaking ball outside, two and two. You can see Messina overthrowing that breaking ball. He tried to really snap it off, and it came out of his hand too early and really was ineffective. Mike, 6'2, 185 pounds. In great shape, 34 years old. Born in the home of the Little League World Series, Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Line in the left center toward the alley. Matsui on the run. So is Rivera. Rivera will get there. Out number one in the Boston first. Todd Walker will step in next. Dave, I spoke to Grady Little just before the game, and I asked him about their approach against Clemens on Monday and the fact that they did make him throw a lot of pitches. And he said, that's what we're going to try to do against Messina again tonight. Try to really make him throw pitches and be patient enough to get a real good pitch to hit before you offer anything. Now, is it is it that easy? You're talking about a dominating Roger Clemens when he's on. He throws a little bit harder than Mike Messina. Doesn't have the array of pitches that Mike has. But can you basically have that philosophy take it from this series on to the next series on to the next one against any pitcher? I think what you need to do is just have it in your mind and be aware that if you do get a good pitch to hit early on, you go ahead and swing at it. But be selective. You can see there, Messina falls behind. And all of a sudden, Walker's got the count in his favor again. Walker batting 323 with three homers, 28 runs batted in. And he's been a real fine for Boston in their lineup. Tonight, batting in the two spot behind Damon. They get good contact men up there right in front of Garcia Parra and then Manny Ramirez. Omar had his hitting streak ended last night. And he says, I really didn't think twice about it. I could care less. We lost the game. The Yankees bouncing back to win 11 to 3. Right through there for a strike, 3 and 1. Mike Messina has been very effective this year in the first inning. He has made 10 starts and hasn't allowed a first inning run. And 254 ERA. Round ball right there to Zeal playing first base tonight. Todd Zeal makes the play. Two up and two down. Garcia Parra will swing against Mucina right here. Omar 0 for 4 last night. That snapped his 26 game hitting streak. So the first time he had gone hitless since April 26th at Anaheim. And maybe the ultimate compliment. He gets booed big time at Yankee Stadium every time he steps in. Yeah, they don't boo nobody's. <laughs> they boo no Mars. And why not? He's a 333 lifetime hitter at Yankee Stadium. So he's become a nemesis. He goes right after that first pitch from strike one. But even that pitch from Messina was a high cutter, and it wasn't where he wanted it. His command is just a little bit off. He's trying to get this ball away from Garcia, and it stays over the middle of the plate and up. Flirting with danger right there. 0-1 pitches outside, and you hear it so many times, and broadcasters are guilty of it. They say, well, the only mistake a guy made all night got hit into the bleachers. It's not always the case. In fact, I could make eight or ten mistakes, pitch a shutout. You know what? Pitchers probably make 45 to 50 mistakes during the course of a good outing. Yeah. Not hitting their spots, elevating a breaking ball. Well, Mike got away with one there. Here's the 1-1. One -one. 
Garcia Parra will swing the bat no matter where it is, where it is pitched from the top of his shoes to the brim of his helmet. He's a little bit like Yogi Berra was when he was playing. He's Yogi Bear said, I never saw a high breaking ball that was too high to swing, <laughs> not to swing at. They come right out of those shoes. The fans at Yankee Stadium would love a strikeout. And again it. Big high fastball from Moose, Mike Messina. He fans Garcia Parra, and he gets off to a hot start. The Yankees are coming up to bat next. Well, when Yogi Bear said nobody goes there anymore, it's too crowded. He was not talking about... Yankee Stadium. Everybody comes to Yankee Stadium. They're taking on the Red Sox tonight. Derek Jeter will lead things off. Matsui batting second. Giambi may be starting to heat up finally. Mondesi has hit nine home runs out of the seventh slot. And they're up against Derek Lowe tonight. His first pitch is low for ball one. And that might be a case kind of circling the wagons, bringing in the great Yogi Berra as you look at the line on Derek Lowe for the season, a 527 earned run average. And they bring back some of their great old players when the fire is as hot as it is right now for the Yankees who are 9 and 16 here in the month of May. Very un Yankee like as low delivers down low. His last couple of outings but he has looked like the 21 game winner of last season but it didn't start out that way for low. Now he has really given up a lot more hits than innings pitch and right there he gives up a four pitch walk to Derek Jeter. His sinker ball sinking but it's sinking out of the strike zone. Tony Coniglio, Cloninger, excuse me, and Brady Little, pitching coach and manager. Very pleased with Lowe's last outing. Nine inning complete game, four hit the Indians. His last couple of starts, a 1 0 record, a 220 earned run average, but we're going to bring down that ERA and now facing Hideki Matsui. He's batting 259. They didn't expect a sky high batting average, but Buck just three home runs from the Japanese slugger. Well, I just don't think power translates from the Japanese league. I think he is more of a line drive hitter. I expect that he'll eventually evolve into a 25, maybe to 30 home run hitter. But I don't think he's a 50 home run hitter. Well, he said yesterday he can't remember ever being criticized by an owner when he played in Japan, but New York isn't Tokyo. And yesterday, George Steinbrenner really stung Matsui. He said, all I know is this is not the guy we signed in terms of power. Different league. Dramatically different. Much more movement on the fastballs. Very good change-ups that he's having to deal with. And then the boss went on to say, it falls to my hitting coach, who's Rick Down, to straighten this guy out. Now, he's done this before with his coaches, and unfortunately, for the coaches, they don't last too long if they don't do that job that he specifies they should do. So if you're down, you're probably not sleeping very well these days. Rick Down knows he's in the crosshairs, that's for sure. Up high for a ball, it's one and two. On deck, Soriano. There's Rick Down, and he is one of those tireless workers, and he's always working with all of his hitters during pregame drills, during the Sessions down in the batting cage in the tunnel, and, and he's learning Hideki Matsui. I mean, this is the first time he's had a chance to work with him. That's a great point. We're two months into the season. He had never seen the guy before, not on an everyday basis. A little trickler. Going to hit that one a lot softer, swinging butt into second base moves Jeter. It had the effect of a sacrifice, but not what they expected out of Matsui, at least to this point. Next up, Soriano. Take a look at the Red Sox defensively, and... It's Ramirez, Damon, and Nixon in the outfield. Bill Miller, we talked about earlier, he's come over from the National League and really stepped in and done a great job at third base. And Shea Hillenbrand is Grady Little's best first baseman. He's done a good job moving across the diamond. This is his 17th start at first base. And most of his defensive problems at third base were the result of the long throw across the diamond. But he's done a pretty good job. He played an entire season in the minor leagues as a first baseman. Mm -hmm. And Grady Little has been very pleased with what he's seen from Hillbrand at first base. I don't think a lot of people know that, that he had time in the minor leagues, so he was prepared to get over there. And here's Soriano. He's hitting five in a row. He rounds to Miller, holding at second base Derek Jeter. He was swinging at the very first pitch, and that's no surprise. Soriano rolls out of bed swinging. Well, after the Jeter four-pitch walk and in, Lowe was still struggling with his command to Matsui and got him to hit that little tapper in Soriano. But this is his style. This is what he does. He sees a pitch to his liking and he goes after it, even though it was a nasty sinking fastball. 
Now, when you're managing games, as Giambi gets in, would you make sure that your pitchers, I mean, reference it? Hey, look, I know you know. He swings at the first pitch. Everybody in the ballpark knows it. Just don't throw him a strike. Giambi backs away. That's ball one. Well, yeah, you try to do that, and we have seen the evolution of Soriano over the last year or two, and he's really become a good breaking ball hitter. Yeah. He's really been a little more selective, but he's an aggressive hitter. He sees something in the zone. He's going after it, and you don't want to take that away from him. That's the most important thing a manager wants to stay away from. Giambi three for five yesterday in the victory for the Yankees. They pounded the Red Sox 11 to three, so maybe he's starting to get going. He's had eye problems brought on by an infection. And at times he's actually worn sunglasses during night games to try and ease those difficulties. But Garcia Parra is a, a terrific bad ball hitter. We saw another great one in Yogi Berra. Guys who are super aggressive. Omar has done that his whole career. He's won batting cup. Yeah, you just can't have everybody hit the same way and everybody hit strikes. There are guys that are comfortable hitting with two strikes and there's guys that like to get it done early. During his 26 game hit streak, Nomar had hits in his first at bats early in those at bats 12 times. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, many of them, the very first inning. 2 1, missed inside. Now here's a, a case in the other direction. Giambi loves to work that count. He'll take his base on balls if you're going to give it to him. He'll work it deep. And now he's worked his way into a hitter's count. So if you're Rick Down, what do you tell Giambi? Or Soriano, they're two opposites. Yeah. You can't have either one of them change. <laughs> that's worked for both of them. You got a former MVP in the box. Just outside, that's ball four. So Lowe is passed on two men, Jeter and Giambi, in the first inning. And Posada is the next man to swing. Uh, first inning, last season, just six runs. This season already, he's surpassed that. Eight runs in his 10 starts. And in my mind, last year was his first year as a starter. He didn't really know how to prepare as a starter. He went out there and kind of pitched with a reliever's mentality. Big part of the plate, let the movement take it to the corners. Now this year, he wants to improve on the starter he was a year ago, and he's trying to do too much. Posada with 12 home runs. He's hitting 253. He's been in 34 runs. First pitch across for strike one. Jeter and Giambi on where no score in the first inning. Buck Martinez, Dave O'Brien with you from Yankee Stadium. Last game of the series. But many more to come between the Red Sox and the Yankees, meeting a total of 19 times. Boston in front by a game and a half in the AL East. And ball one strike. Derek Lowe and Jason Veritek, his battery mate, came here to Boston in a deal from Seattle. They know each other very well, and Veritek knows that he really has to be a psychologist back there to try to maintain a positive approach from his big right hand. Got to get him into the strike zone in this inning. He's a big guy, good stuff, 6'6", 214 pounds, but is he a little bit fragile in terms of confidence? Well, I just think he's one of those guys that needs to have a lot of positive feedback. When you get out there, you want to see good results. And right now, he's missing with that sinker, but it's breaking about a foot. The bottom's falling out of it. So Veritek can help him by raising the target up ever so subtly. And now these two are going to talk about it. And here's where Veritek can really do a job on low and say, listen, your ball is just exploding. You don't have to be so fine with it. Shoot for a bigger part of the plate, and the movement will take care of it. So this is a case of, although he's walked to, his stuff is a little too good. Yeah, right now it is, but he will find it and zero in on it. And when he zeroes in, he throws up a lot of zeros. A swing and a miss by Posada. It was Veritek, after all, who caught his no-hitter last April. This is a good breaking ball, and he throws it right underneath the hands of Posada, who swings over the top of it. Two on, two out, two and two on Posada. And Lowe trying to get out with a strikeout. Line drive instead in the right field. Base hit. Here comes Jeter out in third. That's going to roll all the way to the fence. The Yankees with a run in. Giambi is into third. They put on the brakes. It's an RBI double for Posada. And so the Yankees have a one to nothing lead on Boston as Posada records his 35th RBI. And that's the ninth first inning run allowed by Derek Lowe. And take a look at this pitch. Not the same 
break as that previous breaking ball has spun out over the heart of the plate. That curveball didn't break down and in like the previous one, and this time Posada was able to hammer it down into the corner. That's his ninth double of the year. So the veteran third baseman Robin Ventura now. 23 RBIs, 292, eight homers. He's had a steady year. But he's trying to make this a big inning for the Yankees. Those have been few and far between here in the month of May. Yesterday ending the five game losing skid when they hammered away at the Red Sox. Andy Pettit pitched a terrific game, seven and two thirds for the win. But that was followed by George Steinbrenner's demanding that Cuban pitcher Jose Contreras will get his first major league start on Friday at Detroit. He basically with an executive decision instituted that. Although at the moment he's not replacing right hander Jeff Weaver is really struggling. He's in for David Wells who is sidelined with a bruised cap. But George Steinbrenner get in on the act here. Well and Joe Torre responded to that question by saying you know what I've never been told to do anything and it was a David Wells injury that probably prompted the Contreras start on Friday more than anything. That factored with the number of pitches Clemens threw on Monday gave him an extra day's work. Yep 133 so Clemens pushes his second bit for 300 to Sunday against Detroit at Detroit. Down on Ventura, three and one. Runners at second and third. Giambi and Posada popped him up. Garcia Parra backpedals and he's there for the third out. Side retired, but the Yankees strike first in this finale against their hated rivals. It is one to nothing. New York going to the second inning of the Bronx. Well, Moose is on the mound and he has himself a one to nothing lead. Mike Mussina back to work against the Red Sox. Buck Martinez, Dave O'Brien from Yankee Stadium here on Wednesday nights. And Manny Ramirez swinging at the first pitch, fouls it away. The defending American League batting champion, 349, with 107 RBIs, 33 home runs. His last year, uh, home run totals down a little bit. Are the Red Sox concerned with only seven from Manny so far? No, I don't think so. He's just one of those guys that'll get on a chair and hit six in a week and then pump his numbers right up to where they belong. But Still hit 300, still driving in runs. Yeah, and he'll drive in about 32 runs in a month, and he'll do it quietly because Manny doesn't like to talk to the press. He is by no means a media hound. His teammates adore him. He's one of the most beloved guys in the Red Sox clubhouse. But the problem for Manny is that Red Sox clubhouse oftentimes has more writers than players in it. <laughs> and there's no place to hide. No place to hide. It's a foul, and it's one and two. But one of a handful of great players, great hitters in baseball today. Uh, he's an outstanding hitter, and he produces year in and year out. And same day a year ago, 35 RBI. He's got 32 now. He was hitting 372 with just a couple more home runs. So he's right on pace. You know, gaudy average a year ago, but still very respectable with 310 right now. Was he slid into home plate? Got hurt. It was lost for a time. He scalds that one, but it's backhanded by Ventura for the outs. And so just to put that little nugget in your head, I mean, Mike Messina has seen four Red Sox players. He's retired them all, and, well, he did it in September of 2001, almost had a perfect game. Uh, you can see he's got that knuckle curveball grip, and this one spins to the inside part of the plate. It stayed on the inside corner, but old Robin Ventura down there at third with that good quick step to his right, stabbed it for the first down. Six-time gold glover. Facing Kevin Millar here, he's batting 291. He flies this one toward right center field, but gently racing out Soriano and can't get out of the fall in for a hit. Alfonso Soriano could not make the play, and so here in the second inning, the Red Sox have broken up the perfect game bid for Mike Messina. <laughs> Didn't take long, and it's not a bullet. A little Texas leaguer over the second baseman's head. Another curveball. Millar pops it up it's toward the end of his bat. Look at Soriano's effort. He's out there in shallow right center. Can't make the catch, but he bare hands it on one hop to make sure that Millar can go no further than first. Now, if Soriano had a weakness, say this time a year ago, there were holes in his game defensively. He's worked very hard, and he's come a long way in that regard. The batter is Shea Hillenbrand, a man at first and one out. But where do you, do you rate him defensively? Is, is he good? Is he slightly below average? He's I, got all these athletic gifts. I think he's a tick above average now and going to get better. I think he's really becoming more comfortable. Remember, he was a shortstop. And he's just learning that 
switch over to second base and with each year he seems to master another aspect of defense this year he's improved on his throwing Brent pops that one first base side zeal chasing but it's over his shoulder and out of play foul on two I'll tell you what tonight not a standing room only crowd at Yankee Stadium good crowd at the ballpark but any question this rivalry still has its legs it was answered the first couple of games of this series and granted we had Memorial Day Monday big crowd there the first two games of this series an attendance of nearly 100,000 fans between the Red Sox and the Yankees. Now one of the best rivalries of all time great players over the years and that stuff. Into the dirt it skips away from Posada trying to move up the line but he does not have good wheels and he's cut down easily for the out. Oh what a strong throw by Posada. He went down, blocked the ball, popped to his feet quickly. And as Dave mentioned, Millar is not the swiftest of Red Sox base runners, but he got a decent break, and it appeared to be a ball that he could advance on. But Posada quickly to his feet. Now watch the race runner at first base. Watch how quickly he reacts. Pretty quick reactions, but he doesn't have the speed to back it up. And then Posada throws a strike to the short uh, second baseman who puts the tag on Millar. Who can at least say he was not caught stealing because officially that is not a caught stealing play. Not a pitch into the dirt, so the base is empty and poked right there to the feet of Zeal for the third out. So Messina faces only three Red Sox. Millar out at second base. Nothing doing for Boston. It's one to nothing, New York. Bottom of the second inning, that's Raul Mondesi swinging at the first pitch from Derek Lowe. Both pitchers get the ball and they pitch it, Buck Martinez. They don't hang around in that mound. Puts pressure on the hitter because you never feel like you have enough time to get set in the box. Messina loves to work quick. Same for Derek Lowe, and you're always feeling like you're rushed as a hitter. The Yankees with a one nothing lead over Boston, but it's the Red Sox in first place coming into tonight with a one and a half game advantage. Now Mondesi's cooled off a little. Lead. He's in a nine for 37 skid. But all during that time where the Yankees were piling up wins when they shot out to that ridiculous 20 and four start. They could rely on Soriano. They could rely on Matsui at times, Posada at times, but Montesi every day. Finally, he's cooling off. Raul really hit it off with Rick Down, and they worked very well together, and he finally bought into Down's approach, and he wanted Raul to use the whole field, not try to pull every ball out of the ballpark. Look for a breaking ball from time to time. Take it the other way. All those things that good hitters do, but Mondi was always so anxious to hit home runs and have an impact. He really wants to win, and he has not won before. He wants to make sure that he can do something to contribute. Pops that one up to not hit it very deep. In comes Nixon. He'll make the running catch. Pop makes him a good defensive right fielder. Let's go to Dave and Rob in the studio, guys. All right, thanks, Dave. eBay taking us to Atlanta Reds and Braves, and the Braves just teeing off dibs on Jeff Austin. They are getting it started early. Forever the last Red starter to win a game was Danny Graves back on May 14th. That's 13 consecutive starts without a win. And the Reds now lead the major leagues and home runs given up to 77. Three straight homers to start a game for just the second time in baseball history. Five nothing, guys. My goodness, that Atlanta club. Dave Revs and Rob Dibble will be with us throughout the ball game. Thank you, guys. There's Juan Rivera to hit here with the bases empty. Is anybody going better than Gary Sheffield? Gary Sheffield is the scariest hitter in the National League right now. And I talked to him last week in Cincinnati, and he said the reason he's having so much success is for Kyle and Giles have been on base every time he gets up there. So the pitcher has no place to put him, and that's protection. That's how you create a situation where the pitcher has to pitch to a particular batter. Boy, I should say so. Gary Sheffield's having an MVP kind of start. I realize it's just a couple of months in too early to be talking about that, but Gary's never won one, and he's having that kind of impact on Atlanta. That's across for a strike on Rivera. I saw Sheffield pull Eric Gagne, 97 miles an hour, throw high fastball off the left field fence on a cool night at Dodger Stadium. And, and Brian Jordan, the left fielder, about cut himself in half, twisting around trying to make the catch. And he did not make it. I chop Garcia Parra can't reach it. On a top spin, and Rivera has a single. A man on in the second inning for the Yankees. 
Dave, we mentioned how Derek Lowe is a guy that really needs to be pumped up and have a lot of positive feeling. This is after the first inning when he gave up a run. You see Kevin Millar tapping him on the leg, saying, hey, attaboy, you held him to one run. But look at the body language. He's just kind of slumping around, saying, oh, man, it's going again bad, and things aren't going to work out. Let me tell you something. Hitters see that. They see it on the mound. They see those shoulders slumping, and they sense that the pitcher doesn't really feel confident about the way he's pitching. The play on as Rivera was running and Zeal tapped it foul, so Rivera will have to go back. You know, it boggles my mind. You got a, a big, strong guy out there who is a successful closer. Now he's a successful starting pitcher. He was in the running for Cy Young last year, finished third in the voting, had a brilliant year, 21 wins. And through a no-hitter, why would he lack for confidence? Well, it's just that everybody has a different personality. And, you know, he's got tremendous stuff. I mean, there's no question about the caliber of his pitches. And when he gets on a roll, I mean, he could string together eight, nine wins in a row. He's that type of pitcher. And as I mentioned earlier, when I think last year when he started starting for the first time, he went out there and just said, you know, I'm just going to make my pitches down in the zone and trust my stuff and he threw a no-hitter on April 27th a year ago. Line shot into the alley. That's a gapper. They'll settle down and see him will take off and so Rivera right in front of him. He's heading to third. They're going to wave him in. There may be a play at the plate. The throw home is way offline and the run scores. Two to nothing, the Yankees. Todd Zeal plating Juan Rivera all the way from first base. Right into the alley. Todd Zeal hit a home run here last night, and this time he stays on that pitch and drives it to the alley. That ball is up right about belt high, and he hammers it to the gap. Johnny Damon comes over, cuts it off with a slide, and then his relay is headed more towards second than it is the home. And Todd Walker has to throw across his body and can't get turned around. Take a look at Rivera off the crack of the bat. And now they're going to have to play cutoff and relay here. And you can see how they were lined up towards second. And then when the throw came in, Walker couldn't get turned far enough to make a good, strong throw to the plate. And so the run came in. Rivera touching home. The third hit against Eric Lowe. Jeter started the ball game by walking. And he was brought in on a double by Posada. Brown ball shoots it right through the hole. Here comes Zeal rounding third. They're going to try and score him. No, he's heading back to third base. Nixon with a good arm, and he came up firing. So it's a single for Jeter. No RBI. They're on the corners with one out. This is Zeal's double to the gap. Johnny Davis slides, and then the relay is back toward the infield, but Walker was turned more towards second and didn't get turned all the way around. If he is more lined up toward the plate, they've got a legitimate shot at getting Rivera at home plate. Instead, the throw up the third base line, and it was not close. That'll bring up Matsui in an RBI situation. Is that okay in these spots? He has driven in 30 runs, but again, George Steinbrenner, the boss, the owner of the Yankees, not keeping quiet about Matsui. He wants more home runs. He wants Godzilla. He doesn't want Wade Boggs. And they've got a lot more of the Wade Boggs kind of hitter than they have of the home run guy. Chop foul. Well, and I think Matsui addressed that when he asked, was asked after the game last night, are you trying to hit the ball a little harder? And he smiled and through an interpreter said, yeah, maybe I am trying to hit it a little harder. So the hype and the news has gotten to him a little bit about Steinbrenner's criticism. And he might be trying to do a little bit more right now. Fly ball well hit to left. He goes the other way. Deep Ramirez. Can he get it? He can't. It gets by, but it's up against the fence. Maybe a round on here. One run in. Jeter scores. That's a two-run double. And although Mansui did not hit it over the fence, he does ring up two RBIs up low, and it's four to nothing Yankees. Now Matsui has 32 ribbies. Tony Clanninger quickly out of the Red Sox dugout. And we talk about Lowe sending a message to the Yankee hitters that he didn't feel real good about his stuff tonight. And take a look at Matsui's approach. That ball was away from him. It was sinking, but it was still about knee high outside. Manny Ramirez has a beat on him, but he can't make a play. Derek Jeter running from first base got a good break on the ball. He was all the way to second. And here comes the two runs. 
Zeal and Jeter, and it's a four-run game already. That's four consecutive hits off of right-hander Derek Lowe by the Yankee lineup. Rivera with a single, Zeal double, Jeter single, Matsui doubles. His numbers in Japan, no question, a great, great home run hitter, 332 of them. 50 last year, three times he was the MVP for the Yamiuri Giants of Tokyo. And Soriano played briefly in Japan, although not at the major league level in Japanese baseball. Before the Yankees got him, 0 for 1 with a ground ball out to third. Tremendous power, a second baseman who's at 15 home runs. Wraps that one to Miller. The runner, Matsui, holds. And finally, he gets that second out. Derek Lowe getting Soriano for the second time. And Soriano hit it hard again, but right at the third baseman, Bill Miller. You know, he's hitting in that third spot in the absence of Bernie Williams, and they've juggled the lineup a little bit. He's unaccustomed to hitting anywhere other than that leadoff spot, but he's done a pretty good job, and he's swinging the bat. Now, of all the good hitters on the Yankees, Lowe, Jeter, Soriano, this guy, Jason Giambi, Posada, Ventura, Mondes, for me. Bernie Williams might be the most complete hitter, the best hitter in their lineup. I know he's won a batting title. That might be begging the question, but what do you think? Well, when I used to sit in the dugout for Toronto, he was the last guy I wanted to see up in a clutch situation really? because he was a switch hitter, hitting in the middle of the order. He's very patient, very calm, never really gets excited about anything, and he always comes through with a big clutch hit. He's had plenty of opportunities in what's been a Terrific and understated career here in New York. Now, how do you do that? How do you have an understated career at Yankee Stadium? <laughs> I didn't think that was possible. You're very, very soft-spoken and mild-mannered and just go about your business like Bernie Williams. The Yankees actually have a lot of guys like that. That mindset, that mentality. Giambi walked in the first inning. A runner at second. Three more runs in. Well, it's funny you mention that because that's been a topic of discussion this week when George kind of lost his cool, saying, we need some fire. We need O'Neal. We need Tino. We need those guys that have a lot of fire. I think what, There's no question it's a different personality. Oh, yeah. Than the Yankee teams that, that started this championship run. And Scott Brocious, another guy, Chuck Knobloch, another guy. Maybe they, they missed some of that in, inside their dugout and they're inside their clubhouse. But people are different, and I think what that does, it points out to how special those Yankee teams were. When you had O'Neill, who really blossomed as a Yankee, and Tino came over here, and after really being ridiculed early on as a Yankee that couldn't hit, became beloved Tino. And Joe Girardi, the same way, he came in here. They didn't like him at all. And then it broke their heart when he left. Mm -hmm. Three and two on Giambi. Fouls that pitch away. But it's interesting to hear how a ball club that had lost five in a row until they won yesterday was being criticized for a lack of fire. At one point they were 20 and four. They were 20 and four. Yeah, and, and I think that's a big problem with George Steinbrenner is in fact he saw the team get off to that great start and then saw them struggle here at home most recently. And that's what really bugged him. Foul tipped into the catcher's bit. Giambi fans. But the Yankees get three on four hits off of Derek Lowe. And it's 4-0 New York at the end of two. Wednesday night baseball from Yankee Stadium. 4-0 New York. They've out hit Boston 5-1. Last night they ripped the Red Sox 11-3. So maybe, just maybe, the boss had exactly the right words to chase his team back to the top of the standings, but what's up with Derek Lowe? In between innings, kind of looking at his fingers? Yeah, he, in his last couple of starts, has been pretty good, and two innings tonight, he's given up as many runs as he has in his last two starts. Almost as if uh, he was searching for a blister. Yeah, he was looking at his thumb in between innings, and it's an odd place to have to deal with a blister. Most of the time, it happens on your middle finger of your pitching hand where that seam rubs and gets a hot spot on your finger that leads to a blister. And sitting there next to John Burkett, longtime veteran. John on your left there and uh, yep, Lowe is still occasionally staring at his hand as if it's uh, let him down tonight and it, is, it has so far. He's given up four runs on five hits. Bill Miller leading things off. He's been a Real godsend for this Red Sox team, and when he starts, he hits, man. His last 23 starts, he's hitting every one of them. 
450 during that stretch. Oof. That's poor. His 40. batting average is 386. 41 for 90. That's pretty <laughs> darn good. You're seeing the ball rather well if you're Bill Miller. To his right, Jeter gets there. And Miller is retired. Let's go to the studio and David Roth, guys. All right, Dave, and Dibs, Rafael Percal continuing his torrid pace. Amazing. Last year, he had a 323 on base percentage with 95 runs. This year, he's on a pace to score 160 runs, Rever. His second homer of the game. Braves have five as a team in a 6-0 game. And Phils and Mets, that's Ricky Lede coming through with a three-run shot for the Phils. They're up 3-1. Top of the third, guys. All right, thank you, Dibs and Rever. That's the first for me. I've never heard Dave Repson described as Rever, but from now on, that's what it's going to be. Bucky, you with me on that? Rever. Rever. Count me in. Dibs and Rever. John Nixon at 288. He's homered three times with 23 runs batted in. And trot in right field tonight. He'll be followed by Jason Veritek as the Red Sox try and get on the scoreboard against Mike Messina. And no single Yankees performance symbolized the Yankees' recent plight to Mike Messina. He won his first seven decisions, but then he got cold. He lost three in a row. The Yankees run that wicked 20 and four pace, and he was more than any other Yankee pitcher, the man propelling. Yeah, and Messina talked about how he was throwing during those seven starts where he went 7-0, and oh, and he had tremendous control of his fastball. He could spot that fastball down and away at the knees to right-handers and finish off at bats early. And then he lost that command. But you can see tonight, once again, he's had good location with his fastball. He's been able to get the breaking ball over. And he's been supported by four runs. Well, and here we are well supported and well defended and feeling very safe and sound here inside the Yankee Stadium. Some of the servicemen and women that were with us on Monday during the Memorial Day festivities here. A little bit of a layover on this Wednesday. Downstairs on Trot Nixon. Nixon, an exceptional athlete. He very nearly played football, not baseball. He had signed a football scholarship out of high school to play quarterback at NC State. But then the Red Sox came after him with a million dollar signing bonus. They got him to pick up a bat instead of picking up a safety blitz and it's worked out pretty well for Trot Nixon. He's a real fan favorite in Boston. So far just three home runs. He lays off all four. And so a man on with a man out. Uh, we talk about Derek Lowe struggling in this game already giving up foreign runs and this is in between innings after he came off the mound in the second looking at that thumb and as I mentioned that's an unusual area but he throws that great sinker ball and he puts a lot of pressure on his seam up against his thumb and you can see there's a heavy callus that has developed on the thumb and it might be a little bit tender right now. Pitchers are so concerned about their fingernails, making sure they trim them properly, that they don't develop a hot spot or a blister, and obviously that knocks you right out of a game if you do. Sure. Now you can obviously tell he's laboring 50 pitches through two innings, but it looked like that callus had split just a little bit. And anyone who's put a lot of baseball and you develop those calluses to toughen up those hands, they can dry out and split. And uh, it's pretty painful. Veritek hitting 281. With six homers, he's driven in 24. And on deck, Johnny Damon is the Red Sox need base runners. They have so far managed just one hit off Mike Mussina. The righty from the stretch. A little topper foul. And look at Mike Mussina. Seven wins this year. So he's up to 189 career victories. He has averaged about 17 wins a year, Buck, and he won't be 35 until January. Been a lot of talk about who might be the next 300 game winner after Roger. You obviously have Maddox and then and perhaps Glavin behind him. But how about Mike Messina? Is he the kind of guy that could pull that off? That one, Jack, deep to left center field. On the run, Matt Suey. On the run, Rivera. And a catch made by Rivera and doubling back to first base, Nixon. He's going to get back in. But Rivera made a long, long run to haul that in when it looked to just about everybody in Yankee Stadium as if that ball was going to drop. 
when Cheetah was out, Eric El Monte came up to the big leagues and made an impression and an impact on this team. Now Juan Rivera is filling in for the injured Bernie Williams, albeit in left field. But look at the determination. Drive toward the gap. It looked like it's going to be over his head, and he continues to run, finally extending that glove out just before he gets to the warning track to make a fine catch. Probably saved a run. That is a terrific play. And a lot of ground he covered out there into that left center field gap, running toward the fence. Now, the book on Rivera, as Johnny Damon stands in, is that he has an outstanding throwing arm. And he's always in the minor leagues, now getting a chance to show off his skills at the big league level. And so that's out number two. Nixon had to retreat all the way back. He had gone to second. Now back at first. Johnny Damon over one. He's flying to left. Rivera got an opportunity to get a taste of what it means to be a Yankee during the playoffs last year. He called up, got starts in left field, and Toy believes that will serve him well. He hit 327 in Columbus before being promoted here to the Yankees, so he was swinging the bat well. 24 year old from Venezuela, maybe a rising star for the Yankees. That's a strike on Damon. Two and one. Of course, Rivera was the guy who last year during batting practice, just three days after they called him up from the minor leagues, ran into one of those carts on the field, banged up his knee so bad he fractured his kneecap. And was lost for about seven weeks. Popped up. Foul territory. Ventura is not going to have room off it in the stands. Two and two. We mentioned how the Red Sox had a game plan against Messina. That was to take an awful lot of pitches, but when you're down four to nothing early in a ball game, you lose that patience. You become almost in a panic mode thinking I better hit the first good one I see and that plays right into Messina's hand. Well he can only attack a hitter with about six or seven different pitches. He fires to Damon. He loops that one in the direction of Rivera and Matsui. And again this time it'll be Matsui for the grab. The side is retired. So Messina pitches around ball four but he also gets a terrific catch and it's four nothing the Yankees. Bottom of the third coming away from Yankee Stadium. Hey, school's almost out. It's, it's it's getting near that time where you can stay out a little later at the ballpark. Late May in the Bronx, and it's four to nothing, the Yankees. They've been hammering away at Derek Lowe. They certainly did in the second inning. They got him for four hits and three runs. Posada already with an RBI double. He's going to be followed by Ventura and then Mondesi. Down and in for ball and count to an 0. Now Lowe's ERA on the road is pretty dreadful, especially for a guy who won 21 times last year. 11.57 is his road earned run average. So Fenway has been very sweet for him, but not outside Fenway. Well, and the perception is that Fenway is such a tough part for pitchers because of that green monster. And Lowe is just the opposite. He's very comfortable in that surrounding. Two one hammered up the middle and a base hit. That's exactly what Lowell wants a hitter to do, hit the ball on the ground, but Posada is two for two. Let's go back to that terrific catch by Rivera. And watch how far he has to run. He is in straightaway left field. Mm -hmm. He has to run all the way to the gap in left center, extends his glove out just in front of the 399, and his teammates are anxious to congratulate him for a very fine catch that took a possible double, maybe triple away from Jason Veritek. And of course, not only his teammates, you would expect that as they celebrate a young player's outstanding feat, but the Yankee fans right behind their dugout rising up 15, 20 rows deep and giving him a standing ovation. That has to give a young guy like Rivera a chill. Well, it sure does. They'll get on you when you make a mistake, but they'll acknowledge a good play and a good effort. Ventura's popped up to short. He's 0 for 1. to see to hit after him which we were here on Monday at Yankee Stadium as Roger Clemens made his initial bid for 300 career wins through 133 pitches did not last six innings but even Clemens said afterwards it was just magnificent base hit into right field Ventura 
He's got himself a single as Posada pulls into second base. But Clemens made that comment that, you know, it all came together just perfectly for him. He said his pitching performance didn't, but everything else, being at home at Yankee Stadium, trying to do it against the Red Sox, he pitched 13 terrific years for him. Memorial Day was just a great atmosphere. It was an electricity in the air. Grady Little, the manager of the Red Sox, talked about it. And there's the line of Clemens' game against Boston. He's perched to 299, and certainly he'll get a chance to reach that 300 plateau against the Tigers in Detroit. And coming up on Sunday, back-to-back -back hits off low, still having his troubles. He's allowed seven hits, and that's a rocketed foul. Pulled wickedly into the stands by Mondesi. He's right on it. In fact, a little too much on it. Uh, Mondesi's very quick inside, and Lowe is trying to get the ball on the inside part of the play, but it's up again. And from the first inning, when the bottom was dropping out of that sinker, now it's kind of straightened out a little bit, and he's elevating too many pitches. Honestly, tops that one. It's going to be one play, and that's first base. As low fires a strike there. Modesty running hard up that line. The runners move up Posado to third, Ventura to second. So the Yankees building another pretty good inning here. Two men in the scoring position. Rudy Sin as the veteran right-hander and has just joined the Red Sox bullpen, begins to loosen up. A little too early for Grady Little's taste, but he has to get someone going in that pen because of all the hits off low. Well, and the thing about it is, too, the Red Sox have so much thunder in their lineup, you can come back from a 4-0 deficit. Infield in, here's Rivera. Trying to continue to push his star on the rise. A base hit and a run scored in the second. And the defensive play of the night so far. That's 60 pitches, by the way, for low. So his start tonight, we're talking about Clemens on Monday, it's, it's starting to mirror Rogers' performance. A high pitch count early, and he's behind. The old one inside around the knees. Dave, every time a hitter sees an extra pitch against a particular pitcher, they gain more confidence, especially because Lowe's not throwing many strikes. Now you really get a smaller happy zone. You're really keyhole and looking for something you can hammer. And that puts the pitcher in a tough spot. That time Rivera late on the swing. Todd Zeal will be the next hitter. Lowe has struck out one hitter so far. That was Giambi in the second inning. Zeal has bitten him for an RBI double. Red Sox hoping to cut the runner down at home plate, trying to get Posada if he comes on contact. Two balls and two strikes. One of the really interesting parts of Monday's game, and I'm sure everyone, if they didn't see it, they read about it, Roger Clemens had to give up the glove that he was going to use because Grady Little felt it was, and you know, some of his hitters were complaining about it, it was giving them problems. This is before Roger ever threw a pitch. It's interesting. I asked Grady about that situation. It was a commemorative patch on his glove, and it was big. It looked like a baseball, and it was silver. And his hitters had brought it to his attention, and he said, are you sure you want me to go out there and make a big deal out of this, you know? <laughs> right, right. Because it's going to make Roger mad. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. And they were sure, and they said, yeah, we want him to change it. And Clemens didn't bother him one bit. You know, he just tossed it aside and got another glove. Well, it was a patch that said 300 on it, and it looked like Rivera was a little shaken up there on that swing that he just fouled away on. Did it hit off his foot? The ball might have gotten a piece of him. Let's well, look. that happens a lot with his sinking fastball. You can see that may have hit him on a leg, and he is going to take a little time right now, but he'll beat that sinker ball into the ground. And Gene Monahan, the longtime trainer here for the Yankees, has given his aid and returns to the dugout. And just to double back to the Clemens glove, what, what happened to that glove? What do you think happened to it? I mean, I, I know he wanted to wear it, and, and it would go on to the Hall of Fame if he had gotten 300, I'm sure. But uh, what happened to the glove? It's probably in his locker. <laughs> never, he'll never get to use it again, right? <laughs> well, uh, Major League Baseball approved it. They actually made it for him, but they didn't expect that he was going to use it in the game. I think they just wanted to make it a commemorative glove. He, he took it to the mound. I guess there was a little bit of 
bit of miscommunication between Major League Baseball and Roger. One out, second and third, and the pitch. They're back in there. Takes a ball. And so it's three and two. First base is open. Derek Jeter is the on-deck hitter. Low should fire in a strike here. So if you're Rivera, you're expecting something in that happy zone Buck was talking about. On the outside corner, got him looking. He comes back and strikes out Rivera. Two down. Well, Derek Lowe has been all over the place in this at bat and then drops one on the outside corner that Joe West calls for strike three. Rivera didn't agree with it. He had a tough at bat. He sure did a painful at bat. So a little insult to the injury. Brings up Todd Zeal and the Boston infield goes back to normal depth here with two away. Four nothing New York as they try and take the series from their longtime rivals. And they've been taking from the Red Sox for a long, long time. They took Babe Ruth, and it's been all downhill for the Red Sox since. And Derek Lowe was talking about that. There's been so much hype around New York about Steinbrenner's comments and the fact that the Red Sox are in first place. He said, hey, it's not even June yet. We've been here before. Yeah. We haven't won in nine years. So he knows that it's not anything to get too excited about ahead, behind, or even at this point. And certainly not a thumbs up performance by Lowe so far tonight. He does drill a strike in there to Todd Zeal. One for one with a double and an RBI. And the Red Sox are used to finishing second of these Yankees, of course, five straight years. Brady Lowe trying to turn the tables on him in 2003, and he is in first place by a game and a half over the Yankees. But it looked like a different Yankee team last night as they beat up on Boston 11 to 3. Back to the big right-hander. He is 6'6". He can handle that little topper back to the hill. He gives up two more hits, but no runs in this inning. For low, that's progress. It's four to nothing, New York. Top of the fourth inning, Mike Bucina trying to go to eight and three, and he's had some run support. He leads four to nothing over the Red Sox. Todd Walker takes a strike. Buck Martinez, Dave O'Brien from Yankee Stadium on a Wednesday night. Very pleasant Wednesday evening. And it didn't look that way about four o'clock this afternoon. It got gray, it started to rain, there was lightning, there was thunder. And we weren't in Kansas anymore. It, it was it was kind of scary out here. Boy, it reminded me of Kansas City, that's for sure. Big, big thunderstorm, lightning. Yankees looking for some extra help, but not talking about the weather. It might be getting it tonight, but uh, you have to wonder how much help they got from George Steinbrenner as Walker flies this one to shallow left center. And Rivera trots in for the catch. Let's go to the studio and Dave and Rob, guys. Okay, thanks a lot, Dave. And Reds and Braves Atlanta just obliterating the ball there. Yeah, but Ortiz a good hitting pitcher. He's got a lifetime 213 average, five homers, and 26 walks. Take it the other way, Russ. So that tries went home, and then this, this is just crushed. This is a bullet. Watch it come off done. Oh! Of the bat of Sheffield, it's 11 to nothing, top of the fourth. Have you seen where Freddie Gonzalez, the third base coach of the Braves stands? Sheffield is. <laughs> yeah. He's got a ticket in the upper deck. Behind the screen. He's the smartest guy <laughs> in the ballpark. You don't go anywhere near him. You were talking with uh, David Wells about maybe the effect that uh, Steinbrenner's timed comments may have had on this team. You know, and George Steinbrenner, obviously a very bright man in business, a bright man in baseball, says a lot of things, doesn't keep anything to himself. He likes to express himself. Popped up, here comes Mondesi. And a catch for the right fielder, too bad. We were talking about uh, Derek Lowe's thumb problems tonight. And what's up with them? Well, everybody's trying to pump up Derek Lowe and get him to hold him right there. And then they trim that thumbnail again on his pitching hand. He's been bothered by that callus. And the thumbnail, obviously, a concern as they try to trim it. And that's very important how careful they are making sure not to go too deep on that nail. Base is empty for Manny Ramirez. He's lined out to the third baseman, Robin Ventura. You've seen it trying to go one, two, three. But you were talking about Wells and the impact of Steinbrenner's comments. And David talked about his ball club in this ballpark just kind of coming out and saying, you know, we're not winning here at home. We can't get it done. And 
maybe the Steinbrenner comments and all the talk about it kind of refocused this team and united them against one target. Everybody was <laughs> thinking about George and in the past they were worried about well I'm not hitting and we're not pitching well and we're not playing well here at home and certainly Steinbrenner's comments and all of the front page pictures of George being upset has maybe gotten the attention of this Yankee ball club. Well it's worked before lying into right deep Mondesi backs up and leaps and he makes the catch. He went lunging for it and he hauled it in. For the Yankee outfield in this series has been magnificent defensively. You've seen it pretty good too. Will it be blast away time again for Barry Bonds? Will join us tonight at 10 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. Arizona taking on the San Francisco Giants. Their lead over the Dodgers is just one now in the National League West. Dave Barnett and Joe Morgan coming your way right here. Four to nothing. The Yankees leading Boston as Derek Jeter swings right through this pitch. Jeter is perfect tonight. He's walked and single. He's also scored two times. He was out for six weeks with a shoulder injury. Rounds that one right to Garcia Parra. But when you talk about Derek Jeter, you're talking about the captain of the New York Yankees. And he's starting to get a little bit of that power swing back, Buck. Well, it's timing he's going to come around, and he is just starting to connect. And this was on Sunday, his first home run of the season going the opposite way. And that's always a good sign. And look at the pitch he hit last night. Up and in fastball, and... First Chen tried to get the ball by him up and in, and Jeter was ready for it. And that's a bad sign for American League pitchers that Derek Jeter starting to get his time. One out for Hideki Matsui, and Derek Jeter, another one, who drew the ire of George Steinbrenner before the season ever started. Steinbrenner was critical of the, some of the late nights that his number one player was keeping. Right back at low for out number two. Let's go to the studio. Dave and Rob standing by, guys. Thanks a lot, Dave. And Dibs, Angels and O's, Brian Roberts getting Baltimore going here. Yeah, Roberts coming into this season, 113 games, 401 at bats, at three lifetime home runs. Second homer of the year, both of them grand slams, both against Anaheim. It's 5 0 Orioles. All right, Reverend. 4 0 New York here. Two quick ones by Derek Lowe. He gets the ground ball from Jeter and Matsui. And twice that's happened to Soriano. Each time he has pulled the ball on the ground at third. It takes a strike. Well, all of a sudden, Lowe has retired five straight Yankees, and he's starting to zero in a little more effectively with his breaking ball. He threw a very good cutter to Jeter and then got him out on a good sinking fastball. Same for Matsui. Good, effective sinker. He needs a brief inning. And at first, he faced six Yankees, one scored. He faced seven men in the second inning. Gave up two hits and no runs in the third. And one pulled foul this time by Soriano. Giambi would hit next. But you can see low on the mound now. It's a kind of different energy level. Like he's saying, okay, now I feel a lot better. He, he was scuffling early on, and the blister may have been a problem early for him. But you can see his pitch count tonight very elevated early in this ball game. He averages 92 pitches a start. And is thrown as hundred uh, as many as 117. Oh. Way outside, lost the handle on that one. And we've seen him a couple of times in this inning step off the mound and uh, kind of take a look at that thumb. Yeah, it's got to be a problem to miss this badly. And after that pitch, he pressed that thumb up against his right thigh as if to suggest it was hurt. Because you can't put anything on it. He can't wear a band-aid or anything like that. Well, Zach Day of the Expos just tried to put some crazy glue on a blister, and he was caught by an umpire, and obviously he did eject for that. You can't have any foreign objects on your hand or any kind of Band-Aid or anything to help you with your feel on the baseball. Now, of course, that wasn't a situation where a guy was cheating. He wasn't trying Not to cheat. Not doctoring the baseball. Not doctoring no. the baseball or anything like that. Or applying anything to the ball. A topper. Garciaparo lunges. Throws and gets a close play. And he nipped him at first base. Soriano is out. Garciaparo very gracefully with the play. One, two, three, they go. The Red Sox need some runs. Fifth inning in New York. And the Red Sox trying to get something started offensively against Mike Mussina. He's been very good, though. So good he's allowed just one hit. And that was to this man, Kevin Millar. 
And that was a bloop job in the second inning that dunked into right field over the head of Alfonso Soriano. It's Millar, Hillebrand, and Miller. We'll see if getting a second look at Musina, the 34 year old righty, makes any difference. Wow. That's a wicked breaking ball. Different angle on that breaking ball. He dropped down a little three quarter action. See his finger raise? That's that knuckle curveball. And he throws it from about three different angles. And that time, Millar was full bat. The 0 2. He struck him out. He really tied up a very good hitter. Well, our fans, let's go back to that play by the graceful Nomar Garcia Parra. Well, he's got Soriano running down the line and watch the arm angle right from his hip and gets a lot on it to get Soriano by a half a step at first. He was directly behind the bag at second base when he gloved it. He didn't get his body completely turned to make a throw to first base, threw it from the side and threw a bullet. Hillebrand 0 for 1. So what you're saying is you're hitting ground balls to the, the kids in Little League. You're, the coach. you're not teaching the kids to do it that way. Not at all. But Don't try this at home. No. <laughs> no but from Kenny Bunkford, Maine, down at Natick, Mass, who said, I'm going to do it like Noma does it. Coach, let me do it like Noma does it. Well, when the coach hears that, he should say, well, young man, when you get to the big leagues with the Red Sox, you could do it like Noma. <laughs> Ma is the man in Fenway Park. Hillenbrand lays off. That's down and away. And Shea Hillenbrand was an all-star last year as a third baseman. Right now he's the regular first baseman for all intents and purposes for the Red Sox and handling that position very well. But I mean, defensively, aside from the fact that you're playing on the other side of the diamond and you wear a different glove, is this an easy switch for a guy to make? Uh, I think it's easy. As we mentioned, he played it in the minor leagues, and, you know, it's basically a lot of the same types of grounders hit to you. Left-handers hit the same type of ball at the first base as right-handers hit the third base. A lot of those diving and hooking pitches, hard shots. Slices that one. Not really a hard shot to Mondesi. Two away, you have seen it rolling right through here. And we roll on to the NHL Stanley Cup Finals, 8 o'clock Eastern Time tomorrow. Game two, the Devils take a 1-0 lead, presented by Nextel. Martin Brodeur, his fifth playoff shutout in the first game. Coverage beginning at 7.30 on SportsCenter, live from the Stanley Cup Finals. Bill Miller is 0 for 1, and he's about to be 0 for 2. That one rolled softly off the end of the bat. And it's another 1 2 3 inning by Mike Mussina. Trying to go to 8 and 3. He's in great shape at the moment. Derek Lowe set down the Yankees in order in the fourth inning. He's trying to keep it going on to the fifth. Bottom half, Giambi in the box. He used to be followed by Posada and then Ventura. The Yankees scored a run in the first inning and three in the second inning off Lowe. They did that on a single by Rivera, double by Zeal, another base hit by Jeter, and then a two RBI double by Hideki Matsui. Right there is Nomar Garcia Parra, the shortstop playing on the right field side of the bag. Three infielders on the right side of the infield. Goes the other way with a fly ball that's shallow. That'll bring in Manny Ramirez. The All-Star has it. Let's go to the studio and David Rob, guys. All right, thanks, Dave. Red Hot Jays and the White Sox. Jerry Manuel stays numbered, do you think, Dibs? I don't know, Reverend, but the White Sox aren't helping anything. They're hitting 240 in May so far in 24 games. Well, they do come through there. D'Angelo Jimenez bringing home Joe Creedy and then Frank Thomas, big base hit up the middle. So it's 2-0 Chicago right now, top of the fifth, guys. That's a much better hitting ball club than they're showing right now, and everybody has really pressed a little bit. Jerry Manuel's under some heat there in Chicago to be sure. Yeah, the Chicago newspapers had him fired about three weeks ago. He's still alive, still managing that ball club. Osada takes a strike, one out, nobody on base here in the fifth inning. And by the way, a little bit later in our broadcast come the seventh inning, Rob Dibble will be joining Peter Pascarelli and he'll be kicking around the whole quest tech thing. And is it really an umpire helper? Kurt Schilling certainly doesn't think so. Very controversial umpiring system. Grading umpires. A lot of the umpires apparently don't like their grades when they go back and look at the Quest Tech results. And I know you've got a lot of thoughts about 
the Quest Tech system in 13 Major League ballparks. It's in there to judge the umpire. Well, the Quest Tech cameras are adjusted by cameramen, and every night they're set, and then you have to refocus. So there's a human element in the setup of the Quest Tech thing, and I think the initial idea of Quest Tech to try to help umpires get better was good. But I think what they're doing now is they're making umpires a little paranoid about their strike zone and taking away that human element. And, and I've been involved in the meetings with the umpires and Sandy Alderson and Ralph Nelson and all the people from Major League Baseball. And, and what they're trying to do is come up with a uniform strike zone that everybody calls the pitch that is a strike in the rule book, a strike during the game. Right. But I think now the umpires have really become very, very paranoid about being graded and judged on every single pitch that they call. And it'd be hard not to because uh, they're, they're actually scoring the umpires now and judging them and giving them grades for their strike zone, things like that. Yep, and conversely, Kurt Schilling, one of the aces of the Arizona staff, apparently took out some frustrations on one of those Quest Tech cameras the other day, did some damage to it. And he's in support of the umpires. He wants to see their human judgments relied on much more. Line shot by Ventura and a base hit for him. He's two for three. And we're going to hear a lot more about that from Dibbs and from Peter Pascarelli. The hardened scribe coming your way during the seventh inning stretch. Stay with us. We got Dibbs and Reverend, and we got to come up with a nickname for Peter. Paskey. Paskey. Okay. <laughs> right there for you. Paskey. I mean, that, that took all of a half a second. Good job. Paskey. Okay. I remember that. I'm pretty good, though. I basically, you put a Y on anything, and it'll work, right? That's generally the rule in a big league clubhouse. Mondesi is 0 for 2 with an outstanding catch in right field as well. It really looks like George Steinbrenner has lit a fire under his club. Or at least it generated the fire to his owner's box, and uh, they seem to be less distracted. As far as they're losing ways at home, it really become an issue here at Yankee Stadium, where they had lost 12 out of 13 at home before yesterday. That one tattooed foul. Boy, he's got some noisy strikes. Mondesi knocks that one foul. Mondesi again too quick on the fastball that ball inside and he does he hit it square but pulled it a little too quick out in front had home run distance but it was about 50 yards foul. Pops that one up it's drifting up the left field line it's going to keep on drifting to the stands nothing in two. The Yankees have finally started to score some runs. That was just one element of their overall game that was not happening in the five games leading into it on the homestand. They were swept by the Toronto Blue Jays in a four-game series for the first time in the Blue Jays' history, and they weren't scoring any runs, and Blue Jays were playing a tune on them. And in the last couple of games, they have really had the bats come around. Just outside, Mondesi wouldn't bite. One and two. Well, Rick Down and Jason Giambi, these two have been talked about an awful lot. And I find it really kind of humorous. Giambi has 31 RBIs. He's having a terrible year. Manny Ramirez has 32 RBIs, and he's doing great. <laughs> I know it. I know it. And of course, in uh, Giambi's case, it's up and in under the chin of Mondesi, 2-2. Two -two. He's expected to drive in about 135 runs. A wake up call here for Mondesi. Well, Derek Lowe's had that run fastball all night long, and Monty just ducks out of the way of it. That pitch to me doesn't have as much effect as it does when you make a hitter move his feet because then it takes a pitch or two for him to feel comfortable again. That last pitch, all he does is duck out of the way, and he leans right back in there and he's ready. Swing and a miss, and Lowe fans him. Mondesi 0 for 3. One man left. The Yankees not scoring. They are scoring tonight. The Red Sox are not. 4 0 New York. Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, and the Yankees have a 4 0 lead on the Boston Red Sox. You have one hit against Mike Mussina. We talked about his near perfect game at Fenway Park in September 2001. It was broken up on a single in the ninth inning by Carl Everett. Well, that was the fourth time that Mussina had taken a no-hitter. 
as late as the eighth inning of a start. Blue ground ball, zeal there to make the stop. And that's 11 out of the last 12 retired by Moose. Now let's take a look at that matchup. Yankees in Fenway, September 2nd, 2000. They had that great curveball working. Mike Lansing, check swing on a fastball. Another good hook there. And then Carl Everett with a little flare into left center. Falls in front for the base hit. Messina would see that slip through his fingers, and he was about as good as you can get on oh, that night. Incredible. Veritek punches that one to Soriano. And on the bouncer, he's retired for the second time. Let's go to the studio. Dave and Rob have it. Thanks a lot, Dave. Bills and Mets and Pedro Stasio just doesn't have it tonight, Dave. No. In 13 innings on the road this year, Rever, he's given up 21 runs. Even with his home runs, the Phillies are still hitting less than a home run per game. That's Jim Tony, his 11th. It's 7-1, Philadelphia, guys. Well, guys, Philadelphia Phillies not scoring runs the way everybody expected. And Larry Boy's a little concerned about it. They need some of those runs to show up. There's a lot of offseason talk, Buck, about maybe Tommy and Burrow putting on an M&M boys type of display like the Yankee fans saw here back in the 60s with Mantle and Maris. Two big home run bats as Johnny Damon fouls the boys over two to nothing. Yeah, and of course they have Bobby Abreu who's got a little bit of a back problem right now, but Burrow and Tommy and Mike Lieberthal is having a good season with the bat, but they haven't scored the runs the way everybody expected. And then of course the Yankees here, they've scored runs just about all the time. Of course, 61 that great year with Maris and Mantle. That was a pretty good club. <laughs> they could they could knock the ball out of the park on occasion. A couple guys, Dave, Howard and Bear behind the plate. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness gracious, Whitey Ford in that rotation. The names just roll off the tongue. All-time greats. In the house that Ruth built. Line drive, and that's caught out of the air by Jeter. The first base for the out. He tossed it over there anyway, and the side is retired in one, two, three fashion. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of Commissioner of Baseball. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. The new MLB Authentic Collection Performance Batting Practice jerseys and caps are here. Now anyone can get them. Just visit MLB.com. Buck Martinez, Dave O'Brien from Yankee Stadium. Game three of the series, the rubber game, off the end of the bat of Rivera, but hit pretty deep. But Juan Rivera will fly out to Johnny Damon. That begins the sixth inning for New York, one away for Todd Zeal. Yankees up here four to nothing. The Red Sox have scratched out just one hit. Derek Lowe, since the second inning, has been pretty good. He has scattered three singles. But he gave up those four runs over the first two innings. Will it be enough for the Yankees tonight? Zeal has doubled in a run. He's also grounded back to the pitcher. That's strike one to him. Again, Derek Lowe. Piercing that thumb on his hip, Mike Timlin throws down in that Red Sox bullpen. I think that blister is, see how he's pressing it against the side of his hip, taking the pressure off right on the spot where that callus had developed. A lot of pitches in five and a third. He has not had Derek Lowe like command. Snares that one on a high chop that almost got over his head, but that's not easy to do when you're six six, as low is two away. Well, you got to finish up square to the hitter so you can make this play, and he does it. Then spears it high over his head, and once he gloves it, it's an easy play to first. Now he had a shot at Timlin warming up with the bullpen. The Red Sox without an absolute closer and they started out with a bullpen by committee and that failed pretty miserably just as Pedro Martinez they blew several what should have been pretty easy wins for Pedro but are they getting close as far as centering on one guy as the closer yeah Dave uh, Grady Little he thinks that Brandon Lyons done a heck of a job closing out games for them in fact at Fenway hit a 
three strikeout ninth inning to close out a one run game. Soriano, Jeter, and Giambi. Not bad. Runs. Not bad, yeah. So, yeah, he's really pleased with what Brandon Lyon has done. And he's not really anointed him their closer. He just says that he's going to get the majority of the work right now. Low facing Derek Jeter on a Wednesday night in the big ballpark in the Bronx. Jeter has been on twice with a walk and a single. That's typical of Derek Jeter. Yankee fans just adore him, however they see him. To help them break out of their malaise as he did yesterday with a home run in the first inning. That's a, a Jeter kind of an at bat. Yeah, he has a knack for getting whatever type of hit you need. And they needed to jump start offensively. Lead off home run his 10th of his career. Goes the other way and a bounding ball right at Walker. It's a fast inning for Derek Lowe. Who sets the Yankees down quickly. But New York still leads it here. Four to nothing in the Bronx. Top of the seventh inning and Mike Messina is breezing. He's tossing a one hit shutout against the Red Sox. And as mentioned he's done this kind of thing before against Boston. There's a line drive to base it up the middle. And so finally that single that looped job by Millar has some company. Now on rake by Walker. Let's go to the studio and Dave and Rob. Okay Dave earlier today the Twins continuing to play well. Dibs are doing it with the long ball. Yeah River they started out the season 20 and 17. They're 11 and 3 in their last 14 games. Dustin Moore hitting the homer there. They win it 6-5 and they pick up a game on KC as Brett Boone continues his hot streak. Yeah, they're giving Jamie Moore a lot of start. He's 8-1 and in his last 10 starts. 16 RBI in 11 games for Boone. 5-2 Seattle, guys. Thank you, gentlemen. The Red Sox looking for it. someone to drive it a run, and Garcia Park trying to bunt for a hit. He fouls it away, though. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Even though Messina has really throttled the Red Sox, you know, they're only a, a bunt, a bloop, and a home run away from getting back in this game. I mean, Messina has really been tough. Six plus two hits. It's only struck out two, but look at the pitches. About ten, a little over ten pitches in the inning, and he has really been efficient, challenging the Red Sox early and finishing them off early. Economy of effort. Stung by Garcia Park down the line, and that's a foul ball. But another one hit wickedly, a single by Walker to start the inning. Maybe starting to get to him a bit. Well, they're getting on him a little bit, but we talked about Messina's great start when he went 7-0, how he finished off at bats. He got ahead, and then he made great pitches to get a resolution. He's done that tonight to this point. Pitched ahead all night, and then finished off the at bats. Up high, check swing by Garcia Parra. He was undoubtedly hearing the sound of moose, moose by the Yankee fans inside that helmet. Uh, anytime a Yankee starter gets two strikes, the crowd is anxious for that strikeout. He only has a pair, and one of them was Garcia Parra early. Back off into the crowd. He talked to Dwight Evans about Omar Garcia Parra. And Dewey Evans, a pretty good big league hitter in his own right, and I remember him saying that Take a look at Nomar's bat and where he hits the ball consistently, like a BP bat, whatever it is. He's only about a three or four inch span there where he hits it on a sweet spot, spot consistently, as opposed to every other big league hitter. There are marks all over that bat, about 12 to 15 inches long. Down the line, Zeal and Soriano. Soriano lunging after it, but could not make the play. Up on top of that tarp. Well, he squares up on the baseball as consistently as anybody and you can see that black bat with a lot of knocks on that sweet part and here you'll see him trying to keep the bat alive and he got that one just toward the end of the bat got under it a little bit but your reference about hitting the ball consistently on the sweet spots not that dissimilar than a golfer with his wedge will have that little worn spot right in the middle of that wedge Time batting champ, but he pops it up again. But this one may be caught. Out goes Soriano. In comes Mondesi, and they nearly collide there. And it's made by Soriano. But those two almost banged up against each other. That's out number one. Walker. Those, excuse me, Dave. Those are the types of things you have to avoid. You bump into each other here. This is Mondesi's ball. 
Soriano's got a beat on it. You can see Mondesi calling for it, and the outfielder has priority. Mondesi called for it. Soriano should have peeled off and let Raul make the play. It's an easier catch for him coming in on the ball, and it is Soriano going back. And those are the types of things that cost you ball games. Pops out of the glove, leads to an extra base hit. All of a sudden, they have a rally going. That's the aspect of learning your position at second. Manny Ramirez now. Quiet night for him. He has hit the ball hard, but he's lined out to third, and he's lined out to right. He took Montessi deep and up against the fence with a line shot fourth inning. Seven home runs for Manny Ramirez. He came in hitting 310. And if you're looking for that blast, they got the hit by Walker. He's at first base. And now Ramirez may be thinking long ball here against Mike Mussina. Well, they have such a balanced attack that you don't have to rely on one guy to carry the offense. And we've talked about Bill Miller's addition to this lineup. Same for Kevin Millar, how he's had a positive impact. Manny just needs to get on base, keep the pressure on Messina. Big cut and a miss. One and two, Messina in front. Manny Ramirez is a very good breaking ball hitter. And you can see his average year. 324, 40 and 133. That's doing some damage. But he is an excellent breaking ball hitter. You make a mistake or even make a good pitch with a breaking ball out over the plate, he can put it in play. In there for a strike, he caught him looking. And he tied up a great hitter there with that pitch. Boy, did he ever. He kind of froze him, and that was one of those breaking balls that looks like it's going to be too high. Watch how high it is coming out of Messina's hand, and then drops down sharply to catch the top of the strike zone. Hmm. Manny can't even pull the trigger at this pitch. It just freezes him. That is a serious drop. Now Millar, he's one for two with a single. Foul that one off his foot. Looks like he's down on the left foot. Millar, one of the really great guys in their clubhouse, one of the funniest guys, but no one laughing at this one. Now yeah, that ball right on the inside of his left heel. A moving fastball, he topped right down on his foot. The Red Sox acquiring him from the Florida Marlins. Although it looked like he was ticketed for Japan over the winter. That got a little bit messy, but they were able to get him in Boston. They're, they're delighted with what Millar brings to their clubhouse. Well, he is kind of a real outgoing guy with a lot of energy, and he has, has sparked their personality. You know, the Boston club has been accused of being very businesslike and very quiet and professional. They don't have a lot of real outgoing guys in that clubhouse, but Millar is a different story. Well, they have a lot of guys who aren't very fond of as far as uh, talking to the press with that whole thing. Fouls that one off to the right. But Millar is uh, very friendly, very approachable, and he can crack up an entire team. Well, you got to have somebody on your team that's going to be able to keep things light when you're going through a tough stretch, but it really doesn't count unless you can put up some numbers to back it up, and he's done that early on. Yes, no one laughs too much at, at the 190 <laughs> hitter who has no power. Is a shot down the first base. They got it. They pick off Tom Walker. Posada nails him at first base. Well, for the seventh inning stretch, we're going to come on back to Yankee Stadium here in the Bronx and Pascarelli and Dibble about to duke it out right here. It's coming up. Dave Rebs are back with you in the studio, grading the umpires, the topic of our seventh inning stretch. Dibs? Well, you know, Peter, I think the umpires do a great job. Now you have a flawed system that comes into baseball. You've got cameras that are watching the umpires, putting pressure on the way they call a ball game. I thought they used to do a great ball, you know, job on their own. They don't need anybody to tell them if they're doing a good job or not a good job. Before the season started, they were telling us that they missed over 4,000 pitches with this system. I mean, how can you have a flawed system rate the umpires? Well, the system, I'm, I'm surprised at one thing, though. Kurt Schilling smashing that camera last week. Uh, 
You know, because um, I was always of the opinion that Kurt Schilling was such a self-promoter that he never met a camera he didn't like. <laughs> he finally found one, and uh, Major League Baseball presented it to him. I mean, you have umpires who are insecure to begin with, a lot of which shouldn't probably shouldn't be in the major leagues to begin with, and now they're putting this extra pressure on him. To me, you know, umpires need all the help they can get, but this probably isn't the way to help them. All a pitcher wants is a consistent strike zone, both sides of the play for both teams. Now you've got a system where they're trying to judge different pitchers. It's not going to work. Well, what's great about it is, though, is that on the one hand, Major League Baseball is trying to make the game shorter. On the other hand, they're making it harder to call strikes, which means the games get longer. It's a, it's a great system, and again, it proves that baseball, whenever there's a problem, they can make it worse. <laughs> All right, guys, good stuff. Dave, let's send, back, send it back out to you. All right, Dave Ripson, thank you very much. And with Buck Martinez and in 13 ballparks in Major League Baseball, that controversial quest tech system has been installed. And I think that uh, yeah, definitely Kurt Schilling siding with the umpires and a human decision as opposed to the decision of that camera. But I know that simply trying to enforce better the strike zone buck and pick up that low strike as well as that high strike. But obviously other pitchers, Rob Dibble, they are getting frustrated too. Have you heard this from more than just Kurt Schilling? Well, and the umpires have filed a grievance against Major League Baseball because it, it's difficult to rate the umpires if you have a flawed camera system like Buck explained it at the beginning of the game it's set up by different people at every ballpark and they have trouble getting the high and the low strike zone Sandy Alderson told us in a meeting before the season started that they were trying to get the knee to the nipple strike this year so that it would be a consistent strike zone and it's been anything but a consistent strike zone well, I think, Rob, the big picture has been that they've not called that ball that touches on the outside part of the plate. I think that's a big concern for managers and pitchers alike. You know, Dibs, uh, Buck and I were talking about this before the game, and, and umpires in general. Buck, I thought you had a great idea about former players becoming umpires, either minor league guys or even guys who had a taste of the big leagues. Joe West is... Uh, now he's the face of an umpire, isn't he? I think he's slim. He looks great. That'd Joe, be a Joe looks like he's that's, great that's a tough idea because there's still a few guys around that I would ring right out of the ball club. <laughs> right out of the ball game. I got you. I got you. But the idea is to have guys that have played the game and understand what the timing is of the game and all of that. And that might be something to consider. Well, and, and you know what? When I was pitching, I would go in the, the clubhouse, watch the game, and get an idea of where the strike zone was that night. Say Joe West is behind the plate, and he's given the outside half of each side of the plate. I knew that now when I go down to the bullpen to warm up, okay, I can pound that part of the strike zone and get that call, and he was consistent for both pitchers. Now you don't have that anymore because the, the umpires are so paranoid about how they're going to be rated by the end of the year. Hey, Dibs, give me a quick 30-second scouting report on Joe West while we have you here. Joe West threw me out of two ball games, and he could have always been tainted when he called the game when I was out there. He calls a great game, and he never, ever had a tainted strike zone for me, and he very well could have. So I thought he was one of the more honest and uh, better umpires that I had behind the plate. My guess would be if we pose the question to Joe West, should we Chuck Questek right now, that would be in the affirmative. Oh, absolutely. I think most umpires, they don't need Big Brother watching them. Dibs, thank you very much. And our thanks to Peter Pascarelli as well. It's uh, truly a controversy in baseball that uh, is only going to get better or it's going to get worse. The umpires, however, have their beep and they have filed their grievance. And they would rather we go back to the old system, which was, uh, which was no cameras in the ballpark recording every ball and strike. Little ground ball by Hideki Matsui that rolls out to Walker and one out. That was Mike Timlin replacing Derek Lowe who went the first six innings tonight. And he gave up four runs, a run in the first inning and three more in the second inning. He threw 103 pitches. He did settle down after that second inning and we're not sure his thumb problem, the callus that looked like it was opening up around the fingernail, if that contributed. Well, it probably had some effect on his command early in the game, but in the first inning, I thought his sinker ball was electric. He just didn't have it in the strike zone. He had two walks in that first inning, and then Posada with the RBI double. But after the fact, he settled in and, and really kept the Yankees in check and gave the Red Sox a chance to get back in this game. But Mike Messina has been awfully tough on him. You see it tossing a two hit shutout against a team that he's eaten up before the Red Sox. Soriano 0 for 3. 
So he's not unhappy that Derek Lowe had to leave. After six frames, he tags that one, hooking it down the left field line. If it's fair, it is out of here. It is gone. Alfonso Soriano hits number 16. And the Yankees lead it 5 to nothing. one live bat. Well, you can see that down the road he is going to be a three hitter. He hits for average, he hits for power, he has good speed, and watch this quick bat get through the zone. <laughs> Sinking fastball, no doubt about it. He knows immediately that he has gone deep off Mike Timlin. Pitch was down around the knees and he golfs it well into the seats and left. Giambi slices his foul out of play. 5-0. The Yankees have now out hit the Red Sox 9-2. First hit of the game for Soriano, but he is leading the American League with that 16th big fly. And you talk about where he's going to end up in the lineup. That's where he's going to end up eventually in that third spot. We're sitting there now with the Bernie Williams on the disabled list. Derek Jeter is the leadoff man. Shaking up that lineup is Kind of paid off for Joe Torre, which he didn't want to have to do that. The injury forced it, but Soriano won for four tonight. Now has 39 runs batted in. How important do you think 40-40 is for Alfonso Soriano? Because he, he just missed it last year, came up with 39 homers. I don't know that he is a stats-motivated guy as much as he is a guy that likes World Series rings and likes to be part of this organization. I mean, he's enjoyed a lot of success and been surrounded by great champions here in New York, and his career is just beginning. But he has the type of ability to hit 40-40. In my mind, he's one of the most exciting players in all baseball. Sure is. Don Zimmer was raving about his work ethic in the spring as far as defensively. He went out every day and really worked hard on his fielding, worked hard on improving his accuracy with his arm and there's no question about what he can do with the lumber and around the dining room table as well he eats like it's going out of style pop back out of play or is it here comes Veritek yep it's up on top of the screen Soriano very quick hands through that strike zone wow I mean, that's lightning, low fastball down around the knees, and he put a charge in it. Bat speed, that's what it's all about. And bat speed with a very heavy bat. Yeah, he uses a Julio Franco-type bat, 35, 35, long and heavy. Very uncharacteristic in this day and age. Everybody is swinging those 31, 32-ounce bats and about 34 and a half inches long. But he's got a long bat and a heavy bat. Giambi 0 for 2. Swings and misses and he strikes out. So he had hoped that his problems had come to an end. He's hearing some boos. Last night was 3 for 5. And the Yankees were hoping, but not tonight. Well, he is just having a tough time getting his timing down. You can see he was fooled badly on that sinking fastball. Tried to hold up his swing. A very hard, half-hearted swing. And dejectedly turns and walks back to the dugout. He's had hamstring problems, knee problems, an eye infection, and it appeared as though he started to get it going last night, but he's had another over here tonight. You know what? He doesn't ever complain or make excuses, and, you know, he's more troubled by it than the fans, believe me. He's a tremendous competitor, has a lot of pride in what he's able to do on the field, and right now he's scuffled. It was last year, his first year, coming from the Oakland A's to the Yankees. He had all sorts of trouble the first month, month and a half, and then he caught fire, and he put up a typical Giambi kind of year. The question is, is it getting too late in the season for him to turn it around? You'd have to think with his ability, probably not, but uh, he looks very confused up there. Yeah, that last swing was evidence of that. He just has a lot of things on his mind, and you can see like he's had a wrinkled brow thinking about, man, when's this going to change? Jorge Posada, the catcher, is double in a run. He's also singled and grounded out. Make him two for three. He 
Yankees have nine hits. He's got a big fly from their all star second baseman, Alfonso Soriano. Big chopper. Walker on the backhand flicks it over to first base for round number three. The nobody caught Alfonso Soriano's 16th home run of the year. He's tops in the American League. An unmistakable view. That is Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York. Buck Martinez, Dave O'Brien from the big ballpark as the Red Sox try and get on the scoreboard, try to do something. Mike Lucina, who has been brilliant tonight, he's tossing a two-hit shutout. He had a string of 11 consecutive Red Sox retired. And Buck, only three men have reached first base. Yeah, and he's done it very efficiently, obviously. His pitches have been in the zone consistently all night long. And he was supported by a run in the first and three in the second. That gave him a little cushion, something to work with. But he has taken it from there. Just 84 pitches through seven innings. And that was an aspect of this game that we talked about in the open about being pitch efficient. And Messina certainly has. Millar pops that one up into right. Honestly, barely has to move. Now in to get it. And Mike Timlin, another story. He gave up the home run. Well, he was frustrated by the pitch, and then he went into the dugout and talked with Jason Veritek, the catcher. They were discussing, I'm sure, the Alfonso Soriano home run. Looked like a pretty decent pitch. I'm sure that's what Timlin's asking Veritek about. He said, man, it had a lot of the plate, but it looked like it was down. And he is just so quick with those hands. It's tough to make a good pitch on. Into the dirt on Shea Hillenbrand, who's gone 0 for 2. And I'd love to know how many conversations between pitchers and catchers in the dugout after Soriano lights him up for a home run <laughs> begin with, you know what, I thought I made a pretty good pitch. How'd he hit that thing? <laughs> and by the way, how did he hit it 400 feet? Oh, yeah, he will drive you crazy. Boy, over the last couple of years, too, when he first came in the league, you could flip a breaking ball to him and he'd have a wild swing at it. But yeah. now he is tough on breaking balls. He has learned how to be patient, and he has certainly made some dramatic adjustments. So an intelligent hitter, aside from all the obvious gifts, the quick wrist, this one driven deep to left field, over the head of Rivera, and he leaps, and it's gone. And there goes the shutout of Mike Messina on the back. Shea Hillenbrand, his third home run of the season. He pulls a bullet out of here, and it's 5-1. to one. So the one out in the eighth inning, the Red Sox finally break through on the scoreboard. Well, we talked about a potent lineup all the way through out their lineup, and this is a high fastball of Hillenbrand. Boy, he jumped on it. Right about letter high. Short, quick stroke. Only his third home run of the year, but he is one of the good young hitters in the league, and now... Hillenbrand has 37 RBIs. Not a pretty good pace, especially for guys when they hit three out. Bill Miller will step in and they keep it going. He's over two. The announced attendance at the Yankee Stadium tonight 44,617. Bounding ball. Here's Soriano on the charge. Gets it over there in time for the second out. And later on tonight, the San Francisco Giants, top dogs in the National League West. But by just one game over the Dodgers, will take on a team that's been dominating that division. But not this year, the Arizona Diamondbacks. We go out to Dave Barnett and Joe Morgan on ESPN2. More Wednesday night baseball to come. John Patterson against Damian Moss. And for the Giants, Moss, although he's had control issues, he is 5-3. and three. Fouled back by Trot Nixon. Five to one, the New York Yankees. They scored a run in the first inning, three more in the second inning. Off of starter Derek Lowe. We were talking about Lyon a little bit earlier. He starts to loosen in their bullpen. Brady Little's a little concerned that Lyon hasn't had an awful lot of work lately. He wants to make sure that he gets him at least an inning of work in this game. So he'll probably pitch the bottom of the eighth inning. Nixon swings. That's a slicer down the left field line. He went the other way with it. Rivera can't get to it. That's a foul ball. 
Now Rivera has made a stupendous catch in this game. Matsui, the center fielder, made an even better catch in a Roger Clemens game. His bid for 300 on Monday, a play that came with the bases loaded. And Mondesi has also made a marvelous running catch up against the right field fence in tonight's game. And then don't forget Posada throwing out Kevin Millar on a short ball in the dirt. He a strike for second base, and that erased Kevin Millar back in the second inning. The Yankees playing some inspired baseball, maybe courtesy of the boss, George Steinbrenner. <laughs> they have that cover of the newspaper taped up all over the clubhouse. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> the boss say heads will roll unless yeah. things change quickly. Well, last couple of nights they have. Yankees breaking a five-game losing skid with an 11-3 win last night. And they're out in front here late tonight, 5-1. to one. But you woke up this morning and even on Tuesday in New York, and, and the boss was everywhere. Well, Soriano taking that to heart, perhaps, knocking his out of the ballpark. Look at the defense, too. Rivera deep in the alley, and then Mondesi a couple of innings later with a spectacular play. And the Moose has done the rest on the hill. Like you see, has been terrific. Well, Joe Torre, in response to all of the Steinbrenner quotes, said, you know how we're going to get this thing turned around? By pitching. That's how we got off to that 20 and 4 start. The starters were 16 and 0 to start the season. And Joe says, I don't care about hitting. I don't care about how we play defense. The starters are going to dictate just how quickly we get this thing turned around. A little bit low for ball. You know, it's uh, real interesting to me as far as Joe Torrey and Steinbrenner kind of putting his thumb on Joe and saying, well, I gave him everything he wanted. Steinbrenner didn't ask for Hideki Matsui. He, he didn't even know he's alive until <laughs> the Yankee scouts told him about him. And, and the same with Jose Contreras, the Cuban right-hander. Joe didn't ask for him. Swung out of his for strike three. But it seems like Steinbrenner's words are working in the Bronx. Bottom of the eighth coming up. The Yankees with a 5-1 to one lead. They've out hit Boston 9-3. to three. And the Red Sox dip into their bullpen. Maybe a future closer here. And he has been filling that role to some degree for Boston. Brandon Lyon, you know this guy from Toronto, 23 years old, got a big future in front of him. He made his debut back in August of 2001 when he was just 22 years old. He was a starter then. I think he'll eventually become a starter. He's got all the tools to be a starter, but right now he is really doing a great job. Six for six in saves. This obviously is just an opportunity to get an inning of work, not a save situation. Ventura, two out of three with a pair of singles tonight. With Brandon Lyon. Hails from Salt Lake City, Utah. Originally signed by the Toronto Blue Jays. Broke in with them in 2001. Went five and four in a starting role. Got some starts last year. Also pitched out of the bullpen. Swing and a miss. And down goes Ventura. We're talking about closers. And who is the best in baseball? Well, you got to look at John Smoltz, right? Who's just been incredible. 19 saves, leading the majors. The 0 9 6 earned run average. Maybe getting some work in against the Mets on Sunday night baseball. And uh, I know that John Miller and Joe Morgan will be kicking around that question on the broadcast on Sunday. Who is the best closer in baseball? Is it that man? Well, Mariano that Rivera. Man, he certainly has been effective. 247 career saves for Rivera. Into the hole, Garcia Parr, off balance throw. Not a time. It'll be a base hit for Raul Mondesi, but Garcia Parra with a terrific effort. Well, Garcia Parra gets just about everybody but Mondesi because Raul runs so hard down the first base line and wants the accuracy of this throw off balance away from first base. Gets a lot on the throw, short hop, Hillbrand digs it out, but Mondesi beats the throw. So Juan Rivera, the batter now, is one for three. The Yankees have hit double figures in hits. They have ten. Boston with just three. Fly ball center field. Incoming Johnny Damon. Two away. So it's not Derek Lowe's night, and unless the Red Sox can rally in the ninth inning. He will suffer his fourth loss of the year. Has a lot of trouble on the road. He came in with an ERA away from Fenway of 11.57.
And that is to take nothing away from Mike Mussina, who's been tremendous. It's Todd Zeal. Dave, the Yankees talked about building on Andy Pettit's start. Pettit had snapped a personal four game losing streak with seven and two thirds and five hit ball last night. He is back on track. Messina coming into this game had lost the three straight. That's how you build momentum. I guess it's it's true of every staff. The brave staffs over the years have done a very good job of this, but last night's starter with the Yankees builds up the next night's starter, pumps him up, talks him up, talks about how important it is and how much confidence they have. I know Clemens was doing that right in front of Pennant Star. They're very good friends, I realize, but they all do it. Well, and you can remember all through the years, Smoltz, Glavin, and Maddox all sitting on the Braves bench, but there's what Andy did last night. His first win since April 30th issued just one free pass over seven and two thirds, and he was much sharper last night than he had been. So Pettit himself said, you know what, I was a mess. I hit rock bottom in my previous start, and I turned things around. But you're right, Dave, the starters, they all kind of feed off of one another, not unlike what hitters do. When a team gets hot swinging the bat, everybody feels pressure to contribute. Well, I guess pitching can be, good pitching can be as contagious as good hitting. The Yankees were hoping that would start to happen again, and it certainly did when they were 20 and 4. Modesty takes off. Ground ball back to the pitcher. Knocked down by Lyon. He's going to throw on the first to get him. That retires the side. One hit, one man left, and it's on to the ninth here at Yankee Stadium with New York in front, 5 to 1. In front of 44,617 on a Wednesday night, Mike Mussina trying to go all the way and get the win over the Boston Red Sox. He's in front, 5 to 1. And the batter is Jason Baratek. So trying for the complete game effort right now, tossing a three hitter. Baratek does not have any. He's 0 for 2. Earlier today, Seattle's Jamie Moyer became the second eight game winner in the majors. Well, this would be number eight for Mike Mussina. Corey Lytle is also 1 8. Mike trying to improve to 8 and 3, although they do have activity in the bullpen just in case. We talked about Mariano Rivera, and he'd be used tonight. 42 starting to loosen. It's a ball on Veritek. That was the 100th pitch of the outing for Messina, and he really did a good job of. Challenging the Red Sox hitters early on. Setting the tone for this game. Well, he walks the leadoff man here in the ninth inning. Let's go back to the previous half inning. The Modesty had singled. He's at first base now. He's thinking after he dives in, where's the ball? Is the hidden mm -hmm. ball trick maybe going to be pulled here? Watch this. Who says big leaguers don't have personality? Look at him. Where's the ball? You got the ball? Where's the ball? Is it in your glove? <laughs> no. But he took his hand off the base. <laughs> had the glove had the ball, he'd have been out. He did. <laughs> took his hand completely off the base. And that was, that was priceless to look by Hillenbrand looking into his glove like, what on earth is he looking for? That's across for a strike on Johnny Damon. He's 0 for 3. He has flied to left to center and lined out hard to short. So his average is down to 244. The leadoff man on for Boston in the ninth. Did he check? He did. One and one. So a win here for the Yankees. They're going to have to go through Nomar Garcia Parra perhaps in order to do it, but it'll cut Boston's lead in the East to just a half a game. There's a base hit. Punch to the right side. And the Red Sox are not going quietly. First and second, nobody out. Now the Soriano home run looks like a big run right now. His solo home run in the seventh made it five nothing, and here comes Joe Torrey. And he generally doesn't come out in the ninth, and there's the sign. He's going to go right to the bullpen. So Musina is going to go eight. He does not get it out in the ninth. And those are not Bronx cheers you're hearing. Those are cheers for Moose, for Mike Musina. Who's about to leave the hill, but a terrific effort for him.
Although not a big strikeout night for Moose. Mike Messina with four Ks, but he goes eight innings. He allows just four hits. The Yankees leading it five to one. Baseball tonight coming your way next with Carl Ravage and the gang. And we'll see if the Red Sox have a rally left in them against one of the great closers in the game, Mariano Rivera. He has appeared in nine games, a stay on the DL, but that ERA, well, where it always is, low, 193. Well, he has even made more adjustments in his approach. He's throwing a few more two-seam fastballs that sink down and away from left-handers, but the majority of his pitches to left-handers is going to be that cutter right on their hands. He faces Todd Walker, who has a single. He's gone one for three. Two on and nobody out. So a chance for Boston. Foul out of play. You know exactly what you're going to get. Not many wrinkles out of Rivera. And that pitch, it's a cut fastball, and it's just so late and so short, and just like it darts in on your hands, and you just can't get the barrel of the bat to it. Veritek took ball four. Johnny Damon singled. Down and in, one ball, one strike on Walker. So tonight, almost 45,000 watching the game at Yankee Stadium. That means for the series, they drew about 144,000 for three games. Foul at the plate. So this rivalry still has all sorts of legs. After this game tonight, the Red Sox and the Yankees have 13 more games against one another but they won't have another series until the 4th of July. And how will the American League East look come the 4th of July? Right now the Red Sox lead by a game and a half. Line drive in the right field and drops in front of Mondesi. They pull up Veritek at third and the bases are loaded for the Red Sox. And they're about to bring the time run to the plate here in the ninth inning. Rivera gives up the base hit. Garcia Parra will be the batter. Mike Messina, he tossed a dandy. Eight plus, facing a couple men into the ninth. This one's not done yet. 104 pitches for Moose. And he's responsible for two men. We're now on base for Boston. Last night had no drama. Monday had little drama after the second inning, even though Clemens was going for 300, but here we go with Garcia Parra in the batter's box. He backs away from ball one, in tight around the arm. No ball, three for eight in his career in the head-to-head -head matchup against Rivera. And Rivera tried to throw that cutter inside. That was like another cut fastball, but to the inside. A grand slam ties it, swung out and missed by no more. Red Sox have him loaded up. Veritek at third. Damon at second. Todd Walker at first. Garcia Parra had a long hitting streak of 26 in a row ended last night. Ground ball. Base hit. It gets by Jeter. Veritek is in. Damon screaming around third. He's in to score. And the Red Sox are still kicking at Yankee Stadium. It's 5-3. Derek Jeter kind of got caught flat-footed. He didn't get a very good jump on that ball at all. That's normally a ball he'll at least knock down. Watch his reaction as the ball is hit. Look how late he is when he gets that start. That's an easy play for him normally, but for some reason he didn't pick it up off the bat. He was very late in his break to make that play. Still nobody out. And it's the heart of the order for Boston. Two runs in, first and second for Manny Ramirez. The defending batting champ from the American League is in the box. And he takes a strike. Yankee fans on their feet, and look who's here too. The boss, George Steinbrenner. Yankees principal owner of their number one mouthpiece. That's a cross for a strike. Ramirez is with the first two go, and he's in an 0-2 hole. Boy, that was a great pitch. Cutter right on the outside corner of the knees. 
said the rivalry's dead. <laughs> Nobody in this booth. And certainly not Mr. Steinbrenner. He knows better. No two pitch. He would not chase it. A lot of people around baseball will tell you who played with Manny Ramirez, played against him. They think when he really gets comfortable, when he's really in his zone, it's not until the count gets to 1 2 or 1 and 2. I tell you what, he is like so many of those great hitters, a guy that thrives on the energy of these situations. Walker and Garcia Parra get their leads in the 1 2. Popped up, twisting into right field, and a play from Mondesi. The runners go back to their bases, and that is a big out. All the way, thrown in to third base. Mondesi throwing it over everybody's head. And a glance at the standings. The Yankees trying to cut that Red Sox lead, which is slimming up, down to a half a game. Now, the Red Sox know no matter what happens tonight, should this rally fall short, they still leave town with a lead in the East. But uh, it's going to be minuscule should they fall short. Kevin Millar, two for three against Rivera with the home run, and Posada has just now jogged back from the mound after having a long visit with Mariano Rivera. Obviously, going over their approach to Kevin Millar. Yeah, this is not a hitter that Mariano Rivera knows by second nature. Millar was in the National League, and a line shot dropped by Jeter. The runners trying to advance the flip into second one, not in time to get two. And it caught just enough of the webbing in Jeter's glove to keep it from sailing into the outfield. That was a rocket. If his glove is a half an inch shorter, he doesn't knock it down. Look at the effort here. Great reactions in a bullet. It sticks in the end of his glove and drops right to his feet. He's able to recover and get the force out at second base. Nomar Garcia Powell had to hold his ground. It looked like Jeter was going to glove it. He gets the force out, but Kevin Millar, to his credit, busted it down the line, and the inning is still alive. <laughs> Two down, Mel Stottlemyre out to the hill to talk over the approach and how they'll attack Shea Hillenbrand, who homered in the eighth inning. That broke up the shutout bid by Mike Mussina. Damian Jackson not taking over at first base. He represents the tying run. Is the GM a little bit nervous? Brian Cashman, a very understated, very low-key personality was quoted as saying I like our personnel we've got some guys injured they're going to get healthy they're going to rejoin this team we'll be fine yep, he also said well the owner George Steinbrenner the boss isn't happy he said I'm not happy either nobody is the way the Yankees have been playing he understands what it's like in this town first and third two out Rivera to go after Hillenbrand here five three the Yankees that looks like a courtesy toss to first base, but in the series at Fenway, Mariano Rivera picked up Damian Jackson in the eighth inning of a one-run ball game. He came on as a pinch runner, and Rivera got himself out of a tough situation with a pickup. The ace closer delivers, and it's right through the shoot for a strike. Not even one. The Yankees hoping last night's win over the Red Sox turned the tide. They had been playing some dismal baseball. They had lost five in a row going into last night's victory. Now trying to take two straight and win the series. One ball, one strike. Here's a tough position for a manager. Do you take a shot and try to steal second base with Jackson to get the potential tying run in position with two outs. What would you do? I don't think so yet. Give Hillenbrand one more pitch. Jackson not running. Line drive and a base hit. Turn the alley. A run is in. Jackson is in the third. It is five to four. An RBI single by Shea Hillenbrand. And the Red Sox are making the Yankees front office look a little queasy. 
And they have the tying run just 90 feet from the plate. Now, this is supposed to be automatic whenever you get to Revere late in the game, but the Red Sox are the best hitting club in the American League, and Shea Hillenbrand takes that cutter into right. Damian Jackson easily goes first to third. It is a one-run game, and everybody's getting a little antsy in the front office. Somebody needs some Pepto. <laughs> Man, and just when you think you got it all home and cooled out, here come the Red Sox. Here comes the red-hot Bill Miller. 0 for 3 tonight. Trying to check. They appeal. No swing, says Paul Emmel. That's ball one. Jackson is the tying run. He's at third base. And here in the ninth inning, which they enter trailing 5 to 1, Boston has rallied to score three times. They've done it on a walk and four singles. Over but low, and it's 2 and nothing. Even the boss having trouble sitting still. Yeah, he's looking at that scoreboard, man. Man. It is 5-1. 2 nothing. Two balls, one strike now on Bill Miller. Brian Cashman's going, come on, Mo, you can do it. <laughs> the all-time saves leader for the Yankees, Mariano Rivera, trying to close it out. He's had a rough inning. The guy at the plate has been as hot as a firecracker for Boston. That's in for a strike. All even now, 2-2. Two -two. Miller coming into today, 41 hits in his last 91 at-bats. But now Rivera and the Yankees are one strike away from winning it. The 2-2. Two -two. Just outside. Joe West would not bring up Bill Miller. It fills up the count. Three balls, two strikes. Right off the plate. And I told you I didn't like that quest touch. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it was something like that. <laughs> Everybody on their feet in the ballpark. Here's the payoff pitch. Foul away. Oh, look out. Well, rocketed right over the Red Sox dugout into the boxes. Everyone's all right. Unless you're Cashman and Steinbrenner right now. Baseball tonight coming up next. I mean, George Steinbrenner can barely watch. He figures if he changes spots. Ground ball, deep short, Jeter, airborne, throws long, and this game is tied. Jackson in the score, and the Red Sox have rallied to tie it at five. A base hit for Bill Miller. He took Jeter way into the hole, a near impossible play. And Boston is tied at 5-5 five, five in the ninth. Right into no man, no one. Right here, Garcia Park. Excuse me, Jeter with the long throw and just kind of a hope and a prayer. And George Steinbrenner can't believe what happened here in the ninth. And it's not over yet. Hillenbrand advancing to second base on the hit by Miller. Here's Trot Nixon, the ninth Red Sox batter in this inning. But they we talked about what a potent offense the Red Sox lead the American League in hitting and it took him a while to show up tonight. Messina walked the number nine hitter Jason Veritek who was two for 30 against Messina at that point. And then Johnny Damon single the right, the call to the pin and Mariano Rivera has had a tough inning. A little bit low for a ball on Trot Nixon. Another one the Yankees wanted. Wow. Pretty good pitch. I thought he was high enough. Two and zero. Oh. Rivera in some trouble. That's ball three. Mariano Rivera stabbing at the throw. And those are daggers in the eyes of George Steinbrenner. 
You might even give Trout Nixon a chance to swing right here. Nope, taken all away. And a strike, three and one. Jason Baratek, who started this inning by accepting what looked like a meaningless walk. I mean, the Yankees were leading five to one. Rivera was soon to get into the game. Baratek is up next. Ground ball, hard hit, off the glove, off the hand. Here comes Hillenbrand, right in third. Soriano's throw, the tag. He is out at home. That's out number three. What a play by Soriano. He knocked it down with his bare hand. He kept it on the infield, got to his feet, and threw a strike. Take a look at this, off the glove of Zio, and look at Soriano with his bare hand, knocks it down, gets to his feet, and fires a strike the home plate for Posada to put the tag on Hillebrand. So Hillebrand nailed at the plate, but the Red Sox score four. We go to the bottom of the ninth, tied at five. Well, this has become some game inside Yankee Stadium, 5-5. Five, five. With a huge comeback by the Red Sox. Bottom of the ninth, Jeter. This Miller diving off to his left, recovers and gets him. And Jeter is retired on one pitch. One away in the bottom of the ninth inning. Then Miller in to guard against the butt, goes to his left, picks the ball on a hop, jumps to his feet quickly, and throws out Jeter to start the bottom of the ninth. He's made a couple of very fine plays tonight at the hot corner. Here's Hideki Matsui now. One for four with a two-run double. That was way back in the second inning. He has not quite been the Godzilla they were hoping for. That slice deep into the corner. Ramirez on the run. Can't get it. It's over his head. It's up against the fence. Matsui hard in the second. He'll pull up there as the throw is down the line in the foul territory. It keeps on rolling and rolling. And Matsui is in the third. mistake you can see two bases you get the ball back into the infield and you hold him at second but now the winning runs at third base with one out Manny couldn't make the play goes into the corner tracks it down and watch how he just turns and fires and doesn't really have a target he overthrows Garcia Parr it's beyond Todd Walker he can't make a play now Brandon Lyon tries to chase it down all the while so it continues to run. Right there, he's not really sure if he should go, but once he gets by the pitcher, Willie Randolph says, come on over here. Oh, what a haphazard mistake. And maybe a critical mistake. All right, you can see Grady Little was hot. They're going to put Soriano on. They will not mess with Alfonso Soriano. Manny Ramirez just turned and fired and didn't have any target in mind. So it's a double and an error, an E7 on Ramirez. And so now the Red Sox will pass on Soriano, and they'll try and set up a double play to end the inning with Giambi in the on-deck area. And so it might fall onto the shoulders of the most maligned New York Yankee going these days, Jason Giambi. He's had all sorts of problems with eye infections. Tonight he is 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. He's heard a lot of booze in this game. Well, you're going to put him on too. you got to walk him too because you don't want to give Jason Giambi an opportunity to shake himself out of the doldrums. And this is the kind of thing that would do it. Now you put the onus on Brandon Lyon to get Jorge Posada. But Giambi, four for five with two home runs against Lyon. So naturally, you're going to put him on, put the bases full, give Brandon Lyon an opportunity to get the force of the play in the inning-ending double play and keep this game tight. That makes all the sense in the world, and uh, Grady Little will come out to make sure that Lyon is on the same page on what to do with Posada, who has gone two for four with an RBI double and a single. Intentional pass of Soriano, an intentional walk of Giambi that loads the bases for the New York Yankees. 
with one out here in the bottom of the ninth. Now, Grady Little is out there to talk to the infielders and the batteries. And, okay, Brown, just make your pitches. Infield, we got to go home, obviously. we got to cut that run down. They scored four at the top of the ninth to tie it when it appeared to be hopeless against Mariano Rivera. And now they have to play the outfield very shallow. You see them in the outfield. They can play no deeper than their arm strength. Now Posada last year was doubled up more than any hitter in the American League. You see he's one for five in his career against Lyon. But he hit into 23 double plays in 2002. Fouled straight back. Had a good rip at that first pitch, and it's 0-1. A lot of pensive glances from executive row at Yankee Stadium. The Yankees have unloaded up, trying to win it here in the bottom of the ninth after giving up four runs. In the top of the ninth, check swing. He did not offer one and one. The pitch to Posada in tight. Two and one. Brandon Lyon's got great command. He is got the ability to make good pitches both sides of the plate. That was a slider just missed inside. That's who he represented the winning run at third. Ground ball but foul and not by much. Hopping right along that chalk line. It's 2-2. Two two. Now Jason Barrett very quickly out to the mound with a short little message for Brandon Lyon about their next pitch. Catchers can oftentimes sense where that hitter is looking for a pitch and the way his body attacks a particular pitch. Veritek noticed something, went out there to relay his message to the pitcher. Ventura on deck, but here comes the 2-2 to Posada. Just missed! Goodness, it's three and two. What a great pitch. Inside fastball. Hits the glove right there. Oof. They don't get the call. You can see Lyon felt like he'd made a good pitch. And he did. Now he has to throw it through the strike zone. Ball four. He walks in the winning run. Here comes Matt Suey. And the Yankees win it in the bottom of the ninth. Six to five as Lyon walks in the game winner. He did not get the previous strike. And it cost the Red Sox in the end. Jason Veritek slammed the baseball to the dirt after ball four, turned around and said something to Joe West, and West held up a finger as if to say, I've made a note of that, Jason. Very frustrating inning for the Yankees, or for the Red Sox after they scored four in the ninth. Brandon Lyon walked to intentionally, and then Posada. Now watch the catcher's reaction here. That one's clearly a ball, but he's mad about the previous one. And look at him turn to the umpire, and then watch this. Frustrated, not getting a pitch they thought they'd made on Posada as Hideki Matsui scores. No, he still looks a little queasy, if you ask me, but... The reaction in the Red Sox dug out much, much different than angry Veritek. As the Yankees win the ball game six to five, the Red Sox with a terrific rally. It goes for naught. Baseball tonight coming up next with Carl Ravage, Harold Reynolds, Peter Gammons, and Bobby Valentine. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. A terrific game in the Bronx tonight. The Yankees pull it out. They beat the Red Sox 6-5 and take the series two games to one.